Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids, episode 1000. Press the button. Press the button, goddammit. There it is. I was, uh... Were you hoping for ham horn, or yeah. were you hoping for applause? Ham horn. Let's give it, give it a little ham horn, Giorgio. There it is. We're going to have a lot of effects today. That's that Crime Corner. Oh, Giorgio doesn't, Giorgio know, doesn't know. Giorgio doesn't know Did you the switch board. up the board? I might have. I might have. <laughs> Sucks to suck. Oh, there, there it is. There it was. There it was. You found blue. it. It's always been light blue. Come on. Light blue. Yeah. I didn't even switch it. Episode just didn't know where it was. one. Thousand. It's embarrassing. Uh, technically, it's uh, probably episode 1200, 1300, because of fake news and everything mm. else. But whatever, <laughs> we're here. Live for episode 1000. Uh, we have Lasro Lopez getting a live Hillary Clinton tattoo. There he is. Look at that. So Can you, you roll here the uh, left a little bit? It's, 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 it's in the background. It's him getting a tattoo. Yeah. There it is. Let's see that. Let's see that big guy. Look at that. Oh, boy. Well, We're making history here today, folks. Happy birthday to this future president. Bob, can we put the, the, the tweet on screen? Um, that way the audience will know. We've done it for the last few weeks, and everybody was like, dude, there's no way you guys are going to do that. Yes, we are. And we, we hired our favorite tattoo artist, Will XX, out of San Antoine. Welcome to the show, Will. You've been on before. A while ago. A long time ago, dude. A right? long time ago. Uh, you knew Matt uh, back in the military, right? I did not. Oh, really? No, no, no. I met him like 2015. 2015, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been doing all of our shit for years and years, man. Best in the biz. I called you three or four weeks ago, and you're like, bro, I'm booked for like the next six, eight months. And I was like, hey, can you come in? It's episode 1000. You were gracious enough to, uh, to come in and do it. We greatly appreciate you being here. How long left do you, do you have on, a, on the Hillary Clinton tattoo, would you say, Will? Roughly about an hour. Great, that's perfect. Hour, hour and a half. We're fucking raging all day. Today. And you also said if you were, uh, if the show got boring, you were going to jam that that uh, tattoo gun in his dick hole, right? Uh, it's a little wide, but you now he's got a wide urethra. He's got fine. a huge that's urethra. Yeah. a lot of people don't know that about him. Yeah, yeah his. It's thick, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. There it is. Well, that comes from experimenting with gerbils as a kid. Yeah, a now, lot. So. You're supposed to put the gerbil in your ass, not you your gotta, dick hole, bro. You gotta put it in the well, I back. watched the wrong YouTube tutorial, and so that's how it started. You yeah. should call Richard Gere. Richard Gere had one. Uh, speaking of which, our first episode was, was all about anal. It was Pegging Explained. Mm. That was the first episode ever. When we started this thing, Jared was in his garage, uh, Rocco, uh, Matt, and uh, we didn't really know what we were doing. The mics kind of sucked. That's the only thing. I, I, thought, I think all the early episodes are funny as shit. Mm. Our audio wasn't intact. We didn't know if this was a thing, what was happening. Uh, all I knew is we were number two behind Rogan for maybe a year, year and a half. And then as podcasts started to rise, um, more and more celebrities jumped in the game, and then they fucked our whole shit up, yep. you know? Um, but we were, we've been in the top 100 on iTunes uh, comedy charts for seven years now at this point. I can't believe it's been seven years, um, but here we are. Here we are, D'Anthony. Uh, thanks for being on the show. Like, thanks for joining the show. Sincerely. Uh, I don't think you and I have ever talked about this personally, uh, but we'll talk about it to the audience. What made you want to make the jump and say, all right, I'm going to move to Wilmington and, and do drinking bros. Cause you and I were doing mm. sports for a while mm. before that. And then you were like, Hey, either the show is going to die. Um, because black rifle is starting to get huge and, yeah. uh, no time to do it. No time to do it. One, two, the content was, was too graphic. Yeah. And they were doing a public company that they wanted to go public. And ironically, what, three weeks ago, it, it actually did. Mm -hmm. So it appears they made the right move. But what, yeah. what made you want to make the jump to do it? Uh, I don't know. Bored. <laughs> I was, uh, I like to challenge myself. And I also like to learn things. And this is a, I'm a, I'm a pretty introverted person. So doing this is a challenge for me every day. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is, because you got to be vocal, one. you got to talk to people and, and stay engaged in a conversation. Yeah. And then keep it entertaining for an audience, not just us. Yeah, and, I, and the other part of it is that I like uh, to stay informed, and I just have made it my business now to stay informed. Mm -hmm. So that's fun, and learn new shit, and talk to interesting people. 
It's fun. Yeah, because I think the show would have died without you. I think we, we would have kept Drinking Bros Sports going, but I don't know if Drinking Bros would have continued. Um, <clears throat> there was a, a few things that happened uh, when you joined that, that I said, I said, look, man, the audience is going to fucking turn and be pissed off for about 60 to 90 days because mm. uh, people hate change. Yeah. But I said, once they realize how smart you are and how locked in you are to the political uh, atmosphere and how funny you are, I was like, dude, people will forget about it. And they did. Mm. Um, but we took some heat for about three months. And everybody was like, man, what the fuck is this? And, and I was like, hey, easy. I'm like, I, I'm a pretty good judge of talent. And what I always thought uh, with you joining in particular was that it would be like Ron Swanson and Amy Poehler in Parks and Rec. Mm. Where I'm way the fuck up here, sometimes too much. Um, <laughs> and then you're even keel. And I thought that dynamic would work. Mm. Um, and it did. Um, the other thing, too, was we hadn't really monetized the podcast, which you said, hey, dude, because you were VP of, of marketing for Black mm -hmm. Rifle, you were like, I can come in and do that. Yeah. Because um, I think I'm good at hosting and shifting the conversations and all that other stuff. But let's face it, to create a business in a, in a media company itself, you have to monetize it. You have to get advertisers and mm -hmm. all that shit. And I didn't have any experience in that space at all. Um, my background is movies but sponsors would call for movies and i didn't really have to yeah. do anything for that now to be able to do all this stuff that we do put on the cool events <clears throat> make the products like the seltzer and the merch and uh you know all of that stuff it just costs so much goddamn money yeah um, and that's that's another <laughs> thing that i'm proud of personally is not only with the media company and the seltzer uh but we've never taken any outside money um we're not in any debt nope and uh, I, I don't know many companies after seven years that can say that. Um, shit's been tight at times. Mm. <laughs> Where we've had to put our own money in. And it's like, oh, boy, is this going to work? Uh, and then it always <laughs> did. Um, I think a couple aspects of the show changed uh, where, you know, I'm looking back at the, the previous episodes here. Um, as we were, there's only so long you can talk about touching dicks together, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, it, it changed in some ways, some of the dynamics. Uh, okay. Sometimes. But, like, Evan and I are pretty similar people. Yes. So that wasn't that big of a change, mm -mm. to be honest. I'm just taller. Yeah, that's all. Really. That's all. And I don't wear glasses. Although, he wear, I think he wears them for a show, to be honest. <laughs> you I think, think so? Actually, no. He, he's, he's like... He's got the irritating eyesight. I think it's like 2040 or something, so it's just enough where if you're reading something up close, it, it fucking sucks, and then you have to start wearing glasses. I'm lucky that the Army polished up my eyeballs back in the day. Did they really? Yeah. Oh, damn, that's nice. Yeah, I got LASIK, or I actually got PRK in 2009, um, and I, my visions, I've got like 2015 vision. Shit. Yeah. That's great. Um, but yeah, as the show grew and, uh, and we kept going along, um, I didn't think it was sustainable if we were just talking about but fucking all day. We only talk about it a couple times a week now. We're down from every show. It's well, just a yeah. couple shows. I think a week. part of the charm of the show is that we'll be having a very like serious conversation about a very serious topic, and then all of a sudden we'll veer off into talking about dicks. Yeah. Uh, like before the show, we were looking for a dick hydra. Mm -hmm. Right? Hydra is like a fucking it's a snake, but it has a bunch of heads. Yeah. Right? So we were thinking about a dick. Like, you've all seen Double Dick Dude. He did that Reddit AMA back in the day. Great guy, by the way. Yeah. Well, I don't know if he's a good guy or not. I think he is. I think he is. There's a lot of positive feedback on but him. But anyways, uh, Dick Hydra, definitely going to get that made now, mm -hmm. right? And it's, so this, this business, aside from, uh, you know, not having a boss and uh, being able to make a living doing fun shit, I also, you know, get to do that. I get to dream up stupid bullshit all the time. Yeah, and then make it become a reality. Yeah. Um, especially with the merch. Yeah. Because the well, sky's the limit on that, too. We, we did a decent job of it before, but now that Britney's taking it over, it's actually getting good. Yeah. Yeah, it's getting real good. Like, we didn't make, <laughs> for the first, once we started monetizing the company for the first, like, what, two years, we didn't make a fucking, we didn't make any money on any merch that we put out. We were either it was either at a loss or we were fucking, uh, uh, it was, we broke even on it. Yeah. We had a bunch of weird companies that were doing mm. it. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Jared was always late with designs and shit like mm. that. 
whatever. That's not the case anymore. Um, but one thing, though, that I, I thought was necessary throughout the last seven years was that the show did change to incorporate more things that were going on in the world because the world changed so fucking drastically mm. from when we started to where it is now that if you don't keep up with the times, in my opinion, I think you get forgotten. Yeah. Um, and incorporating political conversations and bigger celebrity guests, uh, I think, was a, a key in making a show last this long and still be great. Um, because I, the, the, the feedback I got, or the kickback, I guess, from my friends in mm. Hollywood and all that shit was, why would you stop making movies to do podcasts? But at the time, like, I realized, not only behind the scenes, but in, in producing my movies, that comedies were, are dead. And they, they yeah. just stopped making comedies. All mm. these scripts were getting chopped down. Lines were getting taken out left and right. Things you couldn't say uh, over and over and over again. And I was like, oh, shit. It, it looks like comedy is going to die. And it, and it did, essentially. Um, yeah. I mean, you don't, when's the last time... The, the only good comedies that have come out in the last, like, five years are Deadpool movies, to be honest. Yeah, and even that's a superhero element. I, yeah. Rogan, I was listening to uh, a couple days ago, he said um, comedy died after The Hangover. He thought the, the Hangover was the last, like, good, popular comedy that was for everybody. And I, at the time, I was like, oh, no, that was a long time ago. Then I was like, wait a minute, I, th I think he might be right. I can't name a great comedy I've seen since then, that wasn't a TV show. Um, hold on. There's this website I found that has every best comedy by year. By year? So let's go. Um, I'd be curious to see what that list is. Because I, I, don't, I don't know one in the last <laughs> five years that I really enjoyed where I was like, holy shit, you got to go see this. This is fucking amazing. 2020. Well, I mean, it's, it's a couple of movies from each year, it looks like. But 2020, Palm Springs with Andy Samberg. I never even heard of that. So I watched it. It's on Hulu. went directly to Hulu. Um, not really a comedy. Mm. Um, and it was, it's, yeah. It, it's uh, a, it, it, we, Bob, would you describe that more as a dramedy? It was about a guy and a girl who were in a relationship. And, like, part of it was depressing. Yeah, it's, it was just very what you would call, like, a modern comedy, I guess. Where, like, yeah, like, literally, like, 50% of it is not comedic mm. in any way whatsoever. Yeah. That's, like, at least. Uh, 2019, one of them is Long Shot with Seth Rogen and Charlie's uh, Theron. Terrible movie. Um, Ter so, do you know, have you seen that? All of, no, I, I wouldn't watch it because all of those movies are the same. It's some fat loser fucking comedian that writes a script and uses Adam McKay to get it made. Uh, and it just gets a hot girl that he wants to make out with and pays her $20 million to make out with. That, that That's all that is. 100% what that it's, movie it's is. It's 100% what that is. Fuck so Charlize shit. Theron in that movie plays like a high-powered political figure. I, by the way, I haven't even I haven't seen that movie. I'm just... Nobody did. Yeah. And, and like she plays a high-powered political figure who's hot as fuck, and then there's Seth Rogen, and then they, they have uh, a love tryst together, and you're just like, dude, I, I don't buy this shit. <laughs> um, what else... What was what else is on that list? Um, let's see, 2018, they've got uh, something called Blockers. I think that was John Cena as a parent trying to keep his kid from fucking. And then guess who did the rewrite on that movie? Then Game Night, uh, which was 2018. I did the rewrite on Blockers. As well, Game Night was legitimately great. Was it? I haven't seen that. Jesse Plemons in Game Night. It, will, it made me like cry laugh. Yeah, I, that wasn't I, bad. Was, it, was he playing a parent? He was playing this. They're like creepy neighbor. Because mm, he's, he's got that look. Yeah. Right? So my best friends. Wrote, he's a really good actor too, by the way. Yeah, he is. My best friends were at Blockers. I got hired to do the rewrite of that movie. Um, I can tell you the even the backstory of that. This is how much Hollywood has changed. That movie was originally called Cherries, um, and it was about four fathers who were trying to. They find a uh, a text thread where their daughters say they're all going to lose their virginity on prom night, <clears throat> um, and it was going to be Vince Vaughn, Steve Carell. Owen Wilson, and I forget who the fourth one was. Uh, Carell and uh, uh, Vince Vaughn backed out, and then the studio, because things started getting super woke at that mm -hmm. point, um, they changed the cast to make sure every race was represented, and then John Cena ended up being the lead of that movie, and it was fucking terrible. It did well at the box office, though. It made me, I think, $85 million. Um, but that movie was nowhere near what it was supposed to be. And it was supposed to be a hard R when, when we did that rewrite. I didn't recognize it when I saw it in the theater. I was like, holy shit. I think I had maybe one or two scenes that ended up in that fucking thing. You know, Pornhub does this too, except for in their version, uh, the dads just swap 
Yeah, they and fucked, fucked and their, they, they fucked their own daughter. daughter the yeah. other, none of the other daughter. Well, it's a stepdaughter. No, so you fuck <laughs> his daughter and he fucks your daughter just to make sure that they get treated right on their first time. It's not, it's not weird or creepy or anything. Like you're looking out for the kid. Yeah, that's how it's framed, anyways. That's how it's framed. Like that's what the dudes will say. Like, man, we don't want our daughters to go off to college and. Not understand what a real man's like. You, why about you fuck my daughter and I'll fuck your daughter? It's just like when your dad buys you a prosty for your first time. That is actually, fi- I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, the other one from 18 was game night, um, and I'm sure it sucked. Uh, it's not bad, actually. Game I mean, night's, it's okay. It, it's, you're kind of there. It's incredible. It's not like a risky comedy. Like, comedy should always be risky. It, oh, it should, 100%. And, like, the, the first draft of uh, Blockers... Um, which was called Cherry. So Blockers, by the way, was even shortened because they renamed it to Cock Blockers, and then they took off the word cock, mm. and then they just named it Blockers. But uh, the, I chatted with the filmmakers there, and, and they were like, I was like, do you picture John Cena doing this movie? And they're like, not in one million goddamn years. 2017 was the two movies that they put here are Logan Lucky, which was a fucking stupid movie that was not funny. Right. And anyway, and Thor Ragnarok. And look, Thor had some comedic elements to it. That rock dude is really funny. Yeah, the rock, Wada. His, his two little fucking sidekicks, they're fucking funny. Yeah, he also directed the movie. Who's that? The rock guy. Oh, really? Did he Take, do it wearing the rocks? Taika Waititi, Taika Waititi uh, yeah. Oh, that's right, dude. He's a massive filmmaker. He's, he's fantastic. Yeah, he plays Hitler in uh, Jojo Rabbit. No shit. You, you'll know him from uh, the original uh, What Lies in the Shadows. Well, okay. we did the shadows, sorry. Yeah. Yes, yeah. the original. Not All right, show. and to go back full, five full years, uh, 2016 is The Nice Guys, which was dog shit. Dog shit. Uh, they tried to remake Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is a great fucking movie, mm-hmm. and it was just terrible. Shane Black wrote Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. He's one of my yeah. favorite writers in Hollywood. Fucking, that's, that's one of uh, Val Kilmer's best performances of his. I mean, he's been in some movies, but that's one of his best like acting performances. And Robert Downey Jr. was in that, yeah, too. Yeah, Robert yeah. Downey Jr., yeah. That was, some say that was the movie that got him Iron Man. It, it really it was, by have, the way. Like, that was, it really that was, was. one of his comeback. What was it, 2005 when that yeah. came out, yeah. I think? That movie was fucking amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then the other one from 16 was Pop Star, Never Stop, Never Stopping. That movie was fucking nobody watched that. I that, was one, I think I was the only one that watched that. That movie was really funny. Andy it was, Sandberg. yeah. yeah. Th- that yeah. was probably the last movie that did anything remotely at like the comedies of the 2010s. Mm. Yes. Or, I mean, not 2010s, of the 2000s. It felt very Zoolander ish. Zoolander, Anchorman, like it had more of that. Ele- that was probably the last movie that felt like those movies. I didn't mind that one, but I think we were one of like four people who saw that. Um, but it was good. It's hard to make. I mean, you got to have Lauren Michaels behind you. He's producing half these sitcoms on TV and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, for as much as like my friends were pissed off and, and some family members who were like, I don't understand. Now they get it. But, you know, as you're going through it and you're trying to tell people podcasts are the next big thing, nobody fucking cares until you're cool or you do something that's remotely successful. And then everybody's yeah. like, oh, man, I knew we fucking knew I it. I always knew it, man. Like you didn't know shit. No, I, we didn't know it. No. No, we didn't. Well, we did. Ah, did we? I, yeah. I didn't know. I wasn't I sure. I don't do things that I'm not sure about. But you still have to maintain relevancy and be cool in certain things. And, like, again, I, I think with politics and the celebrity guests and how you're able to change, it's the people that can't pivot mm. as the world is, <laughs> is turning around you. That's, that's who has problems, I think. You know who else has problems is West Point. Um, so a group of dudes... Six, uh, six dudes. Went on spring break. They went on spring break um, and overdosed on fentanyl-laced cocaine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're probably getting kicked out of school, I would imagine. West um, Point's an impossible school to get into, too, man. Yeah. I mean, shit. It was four, four of the six were cadets. God damn, And dude. Uh, they took the drug and then went into cardiac arrest, and the other two became exposed to it while performing mouth to mouth on their friends. Oh God! By the way, you don't need to do mouth to mouth for those of you that are out there that think you may come into a medical situation at some point. Here is what you should do, right? If the person's bleeding from an extremity, you put a tourniquet as high up into the uh, armpit or leg pit as you can, and tighten that motherfucker up, and write down on their forehead what time you did it. If they've got a sucking chest wound, get a piece of plastic, Yeah. put it over it, tape it on three sides so there's an air vent in the bottom, do it on both sides if there's an exit wound. Uh, <clears throat> and the other thing is if somebody goes into cardiac arrest, 
call the call EMT and do compressions only. You got about 17 to 19 minutes worth of oxygen in your blood. You just have to keep the blood moving so they don't get brain damage. Yeah, but do, breathing into their fucking mouth, that is not going to do shit. No. Uh, the other part about this is that was the first day of official spring break yeah. for colleges. I mean, why and wait then, until the end? <sighs> kids fucking gonna, OD on day one? Yeah, if you're going to OD, you may as well do it on day one so you can be uh, a warning to all the other people <laughs> that the cocaine is bad. Now, will, would they have been allowed to stay if it was pure cocaine? Stay where? Uh, in school. No one would have known because they wouldn't no have known. No one would have known. Yeah, fentanyl. they wouldn't have, have OD'd. Uh, the but fentanyl I, thing, I just don't understand. You're killing off your clients. A bunch of my friends uh, who work in media have been posting lately, like, this is why nobody does cocaine anymore because everybody's afraid of fentanyl. So maybe it's the government doing it. Maybe. I, I never thought about it. That would be a, a great Alex Jones explanation. Oh, it's all coming. Yeah, China's putting in the fentanyl. Um, because I, I've heard, and you can, you can tell me if I'm correct or not, uh, a lot of these drugs are coming in from China too? Uh, I, my understanding is the majority of fentanyl is coming from China. Great. That, but I, I don't know if that's true or not. But I don't either. That's what I heard. I don't either. Uh, as the show went along too, um, we've had some great shows and we've had some, some terrible shows. Uh, there's only a couple that we couldn't air over 1,000, by the way. The one was with uh, David July. Yeah. Um, we did a, a hardcore graphic uh, gay sex episode. We were with a all bunch really, of gay dudes. like, none of us are gay, but we all have gay friends, and you don't want to intrude on your friendship by asking a bunch of fucked up questions. Yeah. So we had this very uh, flamboyant <laughs> and open gay kid there that was interested in answering the questions. So you, t- you know, shoot or shoot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we went to all the things, by the way. I mean, there was... Remember that group orgy story he told in a warehouse with, like... There like, was, 80 guys yeah, or 80 something? 80 dudes, yeah. dude, and they were all fucking. Um, Respect. I know. And it was such huh. a fun episode. You know who else was on that show was Brandon Rogers, yeah. who is, the, in my opinion, the best YouTube sketch artist we probably have right now. I think he's probably the best. I think Brent Pella is up there, but just the, the detailed and layered writing that Brandon does is some of the most incredible shit I've ever and seen. And the in my editing life. back and forth, yeah. man, because he does it himself. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know that. It's not even just like he's playing half the characters, if mm-hmm. not more than that. He's also writing all of it. And, and it's a style of comedy where if you watch any of the series he's done, uh, each individual episode just is crazy in its own right but over the course of 20 episodes there's this like fucking crazy interwoven plot with five different things going on but it's not confusing it just just keeps hitting you over and over again it's really fun to watch on mushrooms yeah yeah it's a blast highly recommend that it's a blast hey uh Giorgio is Jonathan Kite in the building today uh he is i believe he's recording an episode with uh eli giggle boys yeah yeah when they're done uh, bring him in tell him to come in i love jonathan kite we'll do we'll do he's fucking awesome let him get some barbecue yeah exactly um the other fun part about doing the show was the expansion of it uh including all these different podcasts in here and opening up a media company i had always kind of viewed it as like a andy warhol type factory style place and that's Mm. exactly what this has turned into where you just leave cameras uh, you let people come in and shoot fucked up shit, supply them with booze and food, and, uh, and see what happens. Uh, huge fan of the Giggle Boys podcast. Huge fan of Softcore History. You guys shoot every Monday night uh, in here. Um, you, Jake, and, uh, and Hot Bob. Uh, big fan of that. Uh, Iconoblast shoots in here. Drinking Bros Sports. American Party's in here. And the one that is probably going to get us all arrested, Con Men, is shooting now. Yeah. I mean, technically, it's not on the network, but it not is yet. shot here. Not I took yet. Sean's number out of my phone. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's definitely going to. If the FBI ever kicks the door down, it'll be because of him and not me. Sean pitched, pitched us on that, and he goes, hey, dude. And I go, okay, it's, it's called Common. What's, what's it about or whatever? He's like, conspiracies. As soon as he said that word, I was like, nope, definitely can't put that on, on the YouTube. Um, conspiracies is the number one thing that gets you shut down. Yeah, we'll have to... Well, it's got its own separate channel now, so we'll see. How it that does. Goes. I'm I'm curious to see how long it stays up. And we've got Pardon My American. Pardon My Americans on uh, here. Mike Ritland's show. It's Mike not, Drop is on here. It's it's that one we're affiliated with. I guess it's not really we're not producing it or anything, but Mike's a buddy of ours, and we've got a new show with Rob O'Neill starting probably April first week of April. Mm-hmm. 
So a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff going on. Uh, a lot of cool things that have come off the show over the years. Uh, if you look back at it, Black Rifle Coffee was launched off the show. Hard AF Seltzer Kill Cliff. launching off the show. Kind of. Kill, Kill Cliff, Cliff was already around, but between this and the movie, that's what really fucking... Yeah, juiced it. Uh, Strike Force. Car- we did a movie. Carmax, we yeah. did Range 15. Uh, Colonel Holloway was played by a black man, which is your dream. Yeah. You know? Well, it was Keith David, who's one of the, my Best. favorite. He's one of my favorite actors. Actually, one of the first movies I remember watching is Men at Work. With, oh, yes, with dude, Emilio, with Charlie Sheen. Yeah, Charlie Sheen, Emilio Estevez, yeah. and Keith David. It's fucking hilarious. If you haven't seen that movie, it definitely holds up. He sits in the middle in that trash <laughs> truck the entire time, and yeah. it's fucking awesome. Jonathan Kite's in the building. What's up, dude? Have, help yourself to barbecue, by the way, and then come join us up here. Yeah, yeah. We got Terry Blacks. It's always Terry Blacks in here. It's always Terry Blacks in here. Yeah, they should start paying my fucking rent. I know. We, we promote them so much. They're mm-hmm. not a sponsor. They should be. Um, but uh, help, yourself, help yourself to booze, too, Jonathan. Does a legend need a sponsor? Yeah. My favorite thing was uh, Tansy calling it Big Black Jimmy's. Oh, we found oh, yeah, Failure yeah. to Stop. Did you mention Failure to Stop? Failure to Stop, to stop yeah. dudes, on the network. That's what's well, a new one. Um, that's one of my favorites, man. Those guys tackle some fucking aggressive shit. The show, did you hear the show they broke down the other day with uh, the, those people who m- molested all those kids? The Texas people? Uh, I think Louisiana. I think they were from Louisiana. There's a bunch of people from Texas who just got arrested for the same thing. Dude, this was gnarly, man. And they didn't give a shit. They went fucking hard on that show. Um, and that was pretty fucking graphic. Uh, Last Row Lopez has spawned out of this show. Rocco, his dream was to be an actor. He's mm. on the Mayans. That happened off the show. Um, we were asking, there was a, uh, when the Mayans was being cast, um, we went on this show and I think Ross Patterson Revolution and we just asked the listeners, does anybody know the casting director? Or mm. I know, I think it was Kurt, uh, Kurt Sutter. Yeah. Kurt Sutter. Yeah. So does anybody know Kurt Sutter? And then, um, our buddy from uh, shameless hit us up and he said, Hey dude, I know, I know the casting director for that show. They do shameless. Like mm-hmm. I can get him an audition. Can't guarantee him a fucking role or anything. Right. Um, that's Steve Howie. Steve Howie. Steve yeah, Howie was the one who made that call, and uh, and Rocco got to go in an audition, knocked out the audition. Now he's on the Mayans, and I think they're shooting season three or four now at this point. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's a he's a regular. He's a series regular, yeah. and he makes really good money being mm-hmm. a fucking regular on, on a series. That'll go on for a while. Uh, Black Rifle, like we said, went public. Uh, two movies we've shot off of this show: Range Fifteen, uh, Drinking Bros Live. Um, the Shaved Eagle tour, and then we did the cruise, which we'll never do again, and that was one of those magic times where if you were there, congratulations. Yeah. Uh, Not, that was out of control. We'll, we'll, we're going to do a summer camp and then see if we like that and keep doing whatever it is we like, but the cruise thing is just, there's just too much bullshit going on. <laughs> <laughs> that got wild. I mean, I, I'm wild. not worried about how wild it's going to get. I mean, it's going to get even wilder at the summer camp. Well, I didn't know people. I didn't know other people were allowed on the cruise. That's the whole thing with me. Oh well, what did you think? We had a whole cruise ship to ourselves. That's what I thought. No, dude. There's like, and I didn't know. I didn't understand. There's, there's like six thousand people on one of those. Things. I'd only been on one other cruise in my life, so I didn't really understand what it. And then when, once I saw other people boarding, I was like, wait a minute, those don't look like traditional drinking bros listeners. Yeah, um, shit's going to get out of control here. Which it did. I mean, fuck, dude. People were blacking out, throwing up, uh, eating pizza. Because there was open, bar, or like open bars and kitchens all night. Um, I, remember, I forget who I was with on the back of that cruise ship. But like, I remember we ate our food and then just chucked the plates into the ocean. Like, probably Chris Beerworth. Probably. He and Reed White were with us quite a bit. Yeah. And then uh, Eric Totel was there with us quite a bit. Craig was with us quite a bit. So one of those pieces of shit, I'm sure. <laughs> like everybody that showed up was a total fucking piece of shit. Go ahead. There's, there's Help yourself to, yeah. to some hard AF seltzer. Come on in. Come on. You can wave to the camera, Brittany. We got all day here. Who cares? Yeah, who cares? We're getting tattoos live on air. Who gives a shit? How is the Hillary Clinton tattoo going? Can we cut to do a nice little cut there? Look at that. Oh, shit. That's coming in nice. God damn it. It's, it's really good fucking work. And he's got a, he's got a light hand, so this is actually very enjoyable. Yeah. Well, um, it's one of the best. Are you, are, you, are you hard at all? I've had to suppress my boner the whole time. Yeah. You know, I just to be honest with you. Do you guys remember <laughs> those? <laughs> I got a good-looking man right on my thigh. You know what I'm saying? I can't yeah. help myself. Do you yeah. remember how uh, there were always rumors about basic tra- like giving people saltpeter in basic training? 
or whatever the fuck to make them not get boners. That was not true, by the way. It wasn't true? And also, that doesn't work. Okay. I jammed a bunch of saltpeter into my dick hole, and I was still hard. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, the other thing, by the way, that, that's been great about the show, your mic was off, Georgia, yeah, but wow. I, I'm actually going to give you guys praise, was the addition of adding the producers and having you guys chime in and all that shit. Yeah, we just actually did the same thing with, uh, so we've been recording Get Fucked. Uh-huh. Um, we recorded the third episode of My Place the other day and added Joel as a producer off camera with a mic. That's great. Because I think it's just funny to pitch to somebody else. But you need good people who are in on it, Giorgio uh, and Hot Bob and, and obviously Delco Dan. Um, tell the audience what you, you, your background was before this. We'll start with you, Delco. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> he was working at a water canning facility or some shit. I think you were on Total Frat Move. Come on up and join us, Shana. Bring it on in. If you want to eat beforehand, go ahead. We're on for a couple hours, so it doesn't matter. We're going to be on for a bit. We're going to be on for a bit. This is episode 1000. Have you seen the tattoo, Jonathan, that yeah, he's getting? I said that he should have gotten the baby trunk on the other leg, so that when he spreads it, it's a country divide. Oh my god! <laughs> oh. So, so Kytus, that's actually Jonathan a good idea. Kytus saying get a baby Trump on the other <laughs> leg, so that when he spreads, it's a country divided. It's already a country divided, and that's it's beautiful. I think that's a pretty good idea. The, you know, the weirdest thing is they, they Lopez, could be running against each other. In Lopez, are you are you into that one? I'll do that one for five hundred. Shit. <laughs> Get Perfect. A deal. We're getting a deal. Perfect. We're getting, we're getting a steal here Just today. buy one, get one half That's off. That's a good fucking deal right yeah. there. Will's looking at me like, yo, there's no fucking way I'm doing it. I'm a <laughs> shaded Trump tattoo. Not today. Not today. Uh, that's fucking hilarious. But uh, Delco, you're, you guys came over from what? Total, was it Total Frat Move? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Why are you being cagey? Yeah, why are you being cagey? We're not being cagey. Uh, we signed NDAs, but it doesn't matter Oh, anymore. you did? I'm sorry. It I apologize. Really hold up anymore. Okay. The same company doesn't even own it. It doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, the NDAs so. are fucking not non-existent. Where was I before this? Uh, hard money lending. No shit. Yes. Okay. Because a, a lot of people on the show ask, like, how are these guys so good? And I was like, well, they do have backgrounds at other companies doing this well, shit. Well, yeah, it was, that was temporary. It was, I was trying to, like, freelance. I was doing video work. Giorgio found my disc golf video somehow. I don't know how we stumbled upon that. Weren't, but. weren't we doing softcore before you got the show? Yeah, yeah, we were doing softcore as I was working at Lifetime Fitness, too. So Nice. Yeah, yeah we, uh, Brittany and I showed up to Lifetime Fitness. I showed up just to, like, uh, play basketball and get in the sauna. She, mm -hmm. goes, she like, works out or some stupid shit. <laughs> I don't know what she does. But uh, uh, Dan was trying to give us a tour and shit. It was like he still worked there. It was really upsetting. Yeah, me. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, he, it was like uh, you were the new kid at school, and he was showing you around. Like I, because uh, it's just programmed into my brain for the six months I worked at Lifetime Fitness. My career trajectory has been kind of weird. Uh, I started at NBC Sports because mm -hmm. I interned there and then got a full time job on the golf. Oh, on the golf thing, network, right? Golf channel. Golf yeah. channel. Uh, Is that why you're so good at golf picks, or just because you love the I, sport? I like the sport. Okay. Uh, and we're not doing so hot right now. Uh, kept it's like 50 over. mile an hour wins yeah. today. Nobody's. Doing you only got to get one out of seven. Yeah, in golf picks to yeah. make a considerable amount of money. Yes. All right, we'll see. But then uh, I went. I moved to Austin for uh, yes TFM. Wrote for TFM with Rob. We did videos, bunch of stuff, bunch of content. We're like I guess niche famous on college campuses. Uh, Wait, that was you, kind of a weird thing. You go to the right place. We were pretty famous. Yeah, and then I. George, I, I could tell you when, when we walked around Mizzou, it was. Uh, how how old were you guys when you were doing that job? I was twenty three when I first got this job. Oh yes, shit! I was super young, dude. And you guys were famous on college campuses. It's such a game changer, isn't it? Yeah, That's and then outrageous. I then I started working at Lifetime Fitness, at the front desk, and people were like, "I think I'm not." No, no, <laughs> you, don't, you never met me before. <laughs> um, that's awesome, Rob. What was your background? Uh, pretty much the same. I mean, TFM was like my main job I had before this job. Uh, and then like, you know, when that went away, filled the books, filled the whatever with marketing, uh, bullshit and stuff like that. Just got to pay the bills. Yeah. yeah just yeah. paying the bills. Yeah, jobs. Total, total frat move was my main creative job before here. And I started that when I was 25 and did it till I was 31, something like that. Um, yeah. Running the video department, blogging, all that shit. Uh, yeah, pretty all much right. it. Uh, and then, Giorgio, you came with us from North Carolina. You were like, hey, dude, I'll take the plunge and go to Austin. Yeah, I mean, I just want to take this time to thank uh, absolutely no one. <laughs> sure. Uh, I am sure. the Julia Fox of this network. I don't know, you know? who that is. Uncut Gems? Yeah. yeah that's Who's just, Julia Fox? She inspired Uncut Gems. She inspired Uncut Gems and was starred in it and was Kanye's girlfriend. 
So, Uncut Gems. I kind of feel like that summarizes me with this network and, like, when I came on, transitioning from Silent James over to myself. Uh, yeah, it's been a great ride. It's been, it's been amazing, you know. I it just wasn't got- at first, though. <laughs> It wasn't at first. Oh my god, it was miserable. If you guys remember the Wilmington weather yeah. situations, and then like yeah. any, anytime it would rain, we would lose our internet. We would lose our internet, and I would lose like my how, fucking mind. How can that be the case in a coastal town? You haven't figured that shit out. Michael Jordan was fucking born there. Yeah, he was. Figure it out, man. He was. Me and Ross almost killed each Didn't other. Didn't Pop Stargell oh, come yeah. from there too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Some yeah. Of, there was another famous baseball player that came out of uh, Wilmington. I don't remember who it was. Well, Michael Jordan was famous for. No, I mean, not just baseball. Another famous. He did athlete, something I mean. else. He did something else. Did he? I think. I, uh, there was another famous athlete, like he Willie had a bunch Sugar, of car dealerships, right? Sugar Ray Leonard. Uh, no, it was, he was. was is there. he from Wilmington? Yeah, I didn't know that. Charlie Daniels. Shut the fuck up. Rob big, was just big fan of Charlie Daniels. From Wilmington. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, that's fine. Big fan of Charlie Daniels. R.I.P. He's dead. He's dead. Uh, I got to see him in concert in uh, Lake Tahoe. Oof. There's a lake. There was a casino in Lake Tahoe that he played at. So, yeah. But if we're talking crews, this crew versus the crew that was in Wilmington, I got to take this one 24 7. Oh, for sure. Like it's, a, it's, it's night and day. This is just a whole other business. For sure. What was, what was it about Wilmington? Was it the weather truly or, or just we didn't, lack of equipment? I hate it. Uh, no, no, no. Because we had a bunch of fucking issues, oh. audio wise, video wise. Was it the, I mean, what was it? Was it the weather or was it just not the, like the best equipment? Metal Lock Lemon is from fucking Wilmington. Really? God damn, man. I didn't know it that. Was, it, was, it was the equipment. It was like half really nice equipment and half really poor equipment. And then when something would fail, it would just make all of it fail. Plus, the internet was terrible. When they built those container buildings yep. and they built one of them into the way of where we got our internet from, that's really where we had most of our issues. Yeah, Willie Stargell's also from Wilmington. No shit. Look at that. I don't know why. I, re- I, remember, I actually know why I remember that because it's on the fucking board at the uh, Wilmington airport. Oh, you're right. You're right. <laughs> Next to that fucking boat that they It's a very it small at. airport. So, so yeah, you know exactly. They've got there. a boat and not even one that will go in the ocean. No. No, go ahead, Georgia. Fucking dumb. I do miss you looking at me, watching me eat Jimmy John's every single day. You didn't eat Jimmy John's every day for about a year. A year. Yeah. It was a whole fucking year. Like, I thought you were going to die. I thought your kidneys were going to shut down. I don't know how you're so slender. There's so much sodium and nitrates in that bullshit. I mean, eating it from from time to time is fine, but eating it every fucking day. And now all he eats is Chipotle every day. Yeah, but but Chipotle is healthy. He's still 145. You can't be talking about, like, sodium. You buy a, a fucking sodium nuclear bomb, like, once a week. Mind from your, Terry Black. Mind your it's fucking, mind mind your your fucking business, business. Mind bro. your fucking business, dude. Uh, go to, go to uh, Lopez's Tattoo Already, the first sponsor, and then Jonathan Kite is going to join us here. Uh, first and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 40% off that bundle package. Hold that leg up, Scott. Let's I see. like how we're just staring oh, at his asshole tattoo. while you're doing That's the fucking That's a beautiful ghost asshole. Read. Look at that. Wow, that is really coming in nice. Look at that. That's a powerful leg right there, too. Goddamn right it is. I got to contain myself. 40% off the bundle package, adjustable base, and the mattress combined together. Sandwich it up for 40% off. It's the best in the biz. USB ports, flashlights. Uh, you can go into book mode and read, read, uh, read up on a bunch of shit. Josh, uh, Joshua Peck's joining us. I read his new book in that goddamn bed. It's amazing. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Now, let's just say you want uh, a mattress or just the adjustable base or some pillows or the weighted blanket. 30% off with the promo code drinking bros at checkout. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros and enjoy their 60 month pay as you go program. No interest there. That'll knock it down to 20, 25 bucks a month because you can sandwich in all those deals with that and walk out of there with a beautiful bedroom set. Do it today. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. John the Kite, how are you, sir? That noise you just heard off uh, camera camera was him opening up a heart. Cracking it up at hard AF. We got the lemon lime. Yeah, Boom, look at that. Is this, this microphone mic not on? Giorgio, his microphone's not on. Yeah, yeah. Do we have to yell at you like back in Wilmington now? We yeah. gotta turn that on. For the old. Uh, we'll pop it on in a second. It's on. No, it's on. It's, it's on, on, now. on right now. There it is. There we go. There we go. There he is. <laughs> After a long day. <laughs> Of mining Bitcoin. <laughs> Daddy likes to pull up 
with a hard AF seltzer. God damn, that should be our commercial. You should, yeah. I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, do it. Dude, point, point, it you. point it towards you. Point it towards you. Point the mic towards you. Let me tell you. There you go. Just got to get right up in there. Yeah. Just deep throat that right yeah. there. Are you working on a Sam Elliott? Because that's a pretty good Sam so Elliott. So I have a new impression. I am working on Sam Elliott. Are that's you? a good one. Sam Elliott. Yeah, he's at Coors Light, a Coors Banquet. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, the thing about a long day of being out there mining Bitcoin. <laughs> so I watched a movie the other night that I'd never seen before. It Which pops one? up as, as like new movie. Just added, and I was like, awesome. And it had a huge picture of Sam Elliott. Love it. It was called The Hero. Um, yeah. I never heard of it. Exactly. Me neither. Wait, but was it a new picture of Sam Elliott, or was it, it, was it an He's old He's looked one? the same for it's, 35 it's, years. It's the same no, one, yeah. So you don't know. Road, it's funny. Roadhouse, though. His like hair length is long. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and there's a little black in it, but it's yeah. all gray. Okay. Like, right, at, right after that. It's just He's looked the same real. for 30 years. Yeah. 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 So my wife is like, yo, I've never heard of this. And I was like, well, look who's in it. It was Kristen Ritter who was in it. Uh, oh. Laura Prepon was in it. Okay. Uh, Ron Swanson um, was Nick in it. Nick Offerman. Nick Offerman. And well, then that's a, how, have I, how have I not heard of that? I was going to say. Exactly. What was the plot? So the plot is about Sam Elliott, and he is uh, famous. He's a character actor, and he's been working for years. And he did this one movie called The Hero 40 years ago that he was a lead in that everybody loves him from. And now it cuts to he's 75 years old. Yeah. And, uh, and he does commercial voiceovers. So that's how the movie starts is, hey, have you used Johnson's barbecue sauce on your chicken? You should definitely put Johnson's barbecue sauce on your chicken. And then you just hear a guy go, can you do it again? And it's fucking Sam Elliott, yeah, right? It's and great. It's no different inflection yeah. through all the things. You, yeah. It is identical to what you just did. The way he says identical. Coors, uh, the way he says Coors and the look on his face when he says it <laughs> makes me think he's fucking with me and daring me to challenge him Dude, on it. He does That's, it with his eyebrow. Yeah. And he goes, you, if, you don't, if you're not drinking a Coors. <laughs> like, what are you, some kind of pussy? You're against America. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not tapping the Rockies, then you're not tapping that ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, he does. You're right. He has that sort of like, but it's always like the music. It's so funny because it's like, the, he's like the whimsical cowboy poet. Yeah. Yeah. Who's, who's, well, that, that his, his uh, VO work, I guess part of it is VO in, in uh, uh, the Big, Big Lebowski. Lebowski. Yeah, it's of course. Like, that's his personality. Oh, dude, 100%. Like, they, just, they just said, go be your fucking weirdo cowboy hippie self, and then we'll, we'll cut it. We'll, we'll fix it in post. Yeah, he's the, he's the voiceover for Manifest Destiny. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and the weird thing to me was uh, he was on Mark Maron. Uh, mm. I don't know if you heard it. On I w, did not hear it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So the Sam Elliott that you hope was Sam Elliott or you thought was Sam Elliott, yeah. turns out it actually is him. He says, fuck every other word, which is great, and I love it. And um, he's not afraid to say, call something gay without being rude about it. But he, like, didn't he, he just have that thing that came out about the power of the dog? That was on Mark yeah. Merritt. Oh, shit. So I listened to it, and, oh, goes, uh, and he was like, oh, yeah, you do a lot of Westerns. What do you think about this Western? He goes... I, didn't, I thought that movie was a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. And, and I like, read it. I didn't hear it, but I read all about it. Well, yeah. Mark Maron's like, well, what was a piece of shit about it? And he goes, uh, he goes, they kept alluding to homosexuality. And he goes, they weren't real cowboys. He was like, he was wearing chaps and then playing a uh, banjo in the room the next day, but you never saw him riding a horse. And I was like, I mean, he went into the full cowboy aspect of why he hated that movie, because they weren't real cowboys. I oh, think it didn't really have to do anything with the gayness of it, because the, the whole movie is alluding to this one character yeah, being yeah, gay. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. So you think he's gay, and I know they ran with that headline, but that's not really what he meant. He just meant that was what the movie was about, which is really what it was. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that's funny because I read it, no joke, before I came over here, and I, I, something popped up, I don't know, on social, and I was like, that's odd. I didn't even hear about that. I'm going to have to go back and listen. So he's, he's saying that Brokeback Mountain's not a Western? No, 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 not broke by mountain. Power few. No, I, or, I got uh, power, power of the dog. The dog sorry, yeah. yeah, but I mean, but it's were, the same thing, right? No, because no. power of the dog is is um, takes place uh, in the early 1900s. Oh shit! And so he, I think that he was alluding to it not being historically accurate. Correct. Yeah. 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 Well, I like Benedict Cumberbatch. I don't really care about historical accuracy, dude. He is that guy the fucking best. Yeah, he's awesome. He is awesome. Like if if. The only reason they were able to do Khan and another Star Wars or Star Trek movie is because of him. You can move that, by the way. Like he's the only, yeah. he's the only dude. Up and down. Yeah, put it wherever you want. Yeah, put yeah. It Jam that thing up your go. fucking ass if you want. Boom. Uh, yeah, you have to stretch <laughs> out for us. You just hear another can. <laughs> uh, he's the only guy that could have played Khan in my yeah, mind. Yeah, Khan. He goes or Sherlock Holmes. Like so, yeah. There's something, or even Doctor Strange. Would oh, Stephen yeah, Strange yeah. has yeah. a very sort of particular. 
Strange. Peter Parker. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I love him. I think he is fucking awesome. I mean, I love in the best way how he looks. Yeah. He's like such an interesting looking guy. He looks like a fucking... He looks like a praying mantis that's yeah. an anamorph. Yeah. yeah Shout he, out to the anamorph crowd. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, he took his shirt off in, in, uh, in the hero movie, too. We were just Sam like, Elliott right. did? Yeah, Sam Elliott. He goes, you see this? You, you see that what this is down here on my six pack? It says Coors. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing dumb puns for two hours. He goes, that's how he refers to women. He goes, I'm going to go tap the Rockies up in the back. Is he married in real life? Probably to the land. Yeah, <laughs> it has to be, right? Has to be. Did you watch 1883 with him? No, but that's why I was doing the impression. Bro. Well, that, so my impression is, I go, here's my impression right. of Missy Sam Elliott. And I go, is it worth it? Let me work it. <laughs> I put my thing down, flip it, and reverse it. <laughs> <laughs> is it your feminine when you? <laughs> is it your feminine <laughs> if you got a big thing? Let me search it to find out how hard he got to work it. <laughs> He's got to do WAP next, I guess. Uh, yeah, wet ass, yeah. yeah. Wet ass pussy? Yeah. Or, or, or uh, yeah. Or uh, walk in doing wet ass pussy? Yeah. Get a bucket and a mop. <laughs> it's wet ass pussy. <laughs> hey, give it everything you got. <laughs> with this what? That's what it's pussy. <laughs> uh, we know you're friends with Adam Ray. I uh, just love I Adam just Ray. Finished. He's Pam such and Tommy. a piece of shit. I hate him. <laughs> we, we love Adam Ray. No, I know it. But but this is. We just finished Pam and Tommy, and then he, he was Jay Leno. I know. I Man. auditioned, and I was beat out by a piece of shit. <laughs> Shut the fuck. Up. So that was that was my next question. Where did you audition for that? Because I was like, dude, I'm surprised that wasn't you. I did audition. Well. Adam, who, if you guys don't know, is an incredible impressionist. Yes. And um, Leno's one of his, like, that's one of the ones he And by the way, he, he does. you know, and Adam is a very handsome guy, so mm. take this as you will. He looks enough like him where, like, you know, with a guy like me, not to say, I mean, his talent just speaks for itself. He's incredible on the show. But it's like, they, do, they would have to do a lot more to my face, and I feel like my Makeup hair and everything. Wise, and he yeah. probably already spent four to six hours in the chair to get that shit on, right? Oh, yeah, dude. Did yeah. you see it? Was a full, the show? It was a yeah. full appliance. Yes. Like, yeah, it was, it, it was, they had a, a chin prosthetic. I mean, it's like his face shape and his body type, you know, he was like young Leno. That's, you know, mm. yeah. if you were to tell me, like, that guy's going to play young Leno, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. That's a yeah. no-brainer. Yeah, it, like, if like before, like without even seeing auditions, you would. That's my point. Go, you would immediately you asked, go to him because yeah. I had known him and a couple of the people that auditioned, and they were looking for impressionists. Mm. So I was like, "Well, people in our age, because he and I are about the same age, so they were looking for people in their late thirties, early forties, was what the breakdown said." And I was like, "Well, they they have to do stand up in it, and so who looks like Leno in the community?" I'm yeah. like, "Yeah, Adam Ray." Yeah, but also every thirty. Five to forty-five year old comedian does a Jay Leno impression, probably right. At least some probably. Level they, they of thought of, you know, you know, you know, you gotta fall off there. Yeah. Let me, let me, just, let me just tell you, you know, and I did not do a Leno before I learned it for the uh, for the audition. Yeah, you learned it for the audition. Yeah. How long did it take you to learn it? Uh, apparently not long enough because Adam <laughs> Ray fucking got it. You know, it's very uh, no. You know, the the problem is the thing is he's like a guy. That, that people have just been doing for so long, so like people understand more the caricature of him, and they, yeah, were, yeah. And they were looking for a voice match, mm -hmm. so I tried to do him as conversational, and not like, yeah, the deal, what's going on here? You know, Jay Leno, when people kind of go, blah, blah, blah. that's yeah. not, you know, they, wanted, they needed him to talk, <coughs> yes. and not be like a crazy caricature that people were like, I can't understand the story, because this fucking guy is going off the rails right now. Well, and also they followed word for word script, the actual interview itself with yeah. Pamela Anderson, yep. so like, it was a lot of flashbacks. He was probably he'll probably have to shoot for one or two days on that, uh, because it was the same scene intercut throughout. Yes, and, yeah. yes, I imagine especially that because I've had um, uh, I've had hair and makeup. Did I actually? I was on a sketch show a while ago, and they they put me in hair and makeup to be Rush Limbaugh. And no shit. the craziest thing I did they didn't add look a, a facial appliance. Yes, they had to add like a, a big one, a huge he's bladder. Like, he's got like a jowl, a turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I go. I, he looks like a, a, a pelican mm. storing up for two winters. And um, and so, but I did it. But here's the thing: it wasn't enough. Like the thing is with Adam, because Jay Leno has such a recognizable face yeah. that it's obviously a, an incredible bonus how talented he is as a comedian and an impressionist. Mm -hmm. But like. Jay Leno has such a specific looking face that we have been accustomed to looking at for 20, 30 years yeah. that it's like, you got to have him look like the guy. So <laughs> it's just a bonus that Adam is so talented as an impressionist. Well, he's a big Seattle sports fan. So I've been actively working behind the scenes to keep an NBA franchise from going there. 
just <laughs> to fuck with him, bro. Because I, I really enjoy it. It's the bait of his existence. I really enjoy Adam Ray, and my, the thing that I do to show affection because I'm a child is to, is to be a dick to you. Right? Ruin his plans. Right, yes. Yeah. Oh, he, he wants that. He I wants know, the Supersonics more, more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. More than his own success. Yeah, I was so he happy would probably that, give that up Russell Wilson success. left. Yeah, well, wow. Russell Wilson's gone. And I know. That's gonna, Denver, that's, Seattle's going to be terrible for years and years unless they get Deshaun Watson. They'll, they're, they're not. The Panthers are going to get him. But that's what I think too. Uh, the Seattle will be good in like two or three years. The crazy thing I would say about basketball is though the the idea that there are probably like five cities that absolutely because the because basketball is the fastest growing sport in the world yep. so it's like with the amount of european players that are coming over right mm-hmm. now and you look at the draft like some of these guys like even out of high school these kid mikey williams you know like these young dudes mm-hmm. they probably could be pretty i'm not saying that they're gonna like be like a, a cunningham like where they just make a difference immediately with yeah, his yeah. size and speed yeah. but it's like they need more teams like st louis could use a team you know, like oh, I'm boy. against. Don't any, get me no, started. Our I'm producers a, from St. Louis. In, in, in principle, I'm against anything good happening to St. Louis. Let's Bob. Oh, okay, then Springfield, been, Missouri. Have you put, put, get put a camera on put Bob. It in Branson. Yeah, put the <laughs> camera on Bob. Does St. Louis <laughs> deserve an NBA team? Are they good enough for that? Yeah, of course. It's a fu- like first. That, off, it's a great sports town. No, it's that's what real. I mean. There's like there's so many that, that like like by the way Pittsburgh. Weird. I mean, here's the thing. You had to look at play, like uh, sorry to cut you off, but just look at teams. We we did the analytics. My cousin and I. Mm. Yeah. About like there are. It's it's actually weird. They're leaving money on the table. And Pittsburgh doesn't yeah. really like. Philadelphia that much. No, so it's got to be hard for them no. to root for that. Exactly. Team, right? I mean, they They're, just root for the Knicks or what? I, or or I, I don't think that they fucking root or the New Jersey care. or who's no, now the no a solution for everyone. You move it to St. Charles. Ugh, you moved to what? What are you talking yeah, it's about? It's just a there's, subdivision of there, St. Louis. There's <laughs> also no beef between Philly and Pittsburgh other than hockey. Like that's the only sport we really Steelers care. Steelers and Eagles fans don't uh, care for each it, other no, too much. No, we we don't really have any beef with the it's Steelers. It's AFC NFC, so you guys don't yep. play each other that I much. I like yeah. how you de facto now speak for Philadelphia and All Eagles the time. fans. You yeah. should. Look at them. I speak for Ohio State. Go so Birds. Yeah, you should. Go yeah. Who are your, who are your teams? So Bulls 100% mm-hmm. grew up got to see Michael Jordan play. I only remember once, but my mother's like you were there twice. Maybe I just passed out like a girl who just watched the Beatles mm-hmm. and Ed Sullivan. I don't remember. But um love them. Used to work for the Cubs. Uh, sold, you did personally sold hot dogs. Shut the fuck the up. The year that fucking Sosa and McGuire were going for it. Oh, 98? Oh, dude. Dude, it was incredible. And that was the best. That probably had to have been a that's, great that's job. The best season, great. That's the best season in all of baseball history. I it was agree. incredible. It was beautiful. And then I love, I mean, it, when the Blackhawks are going, I, when, when they play the Kings, I'll go to the mm. games in L.A. But I love basketball. I, um, I, I used to be a season ticket holder to the Clippers. Mm. And then uh, well, they've got that new arena. It was you and Billy yeah. Crystal. You guys were the only two, dude. I'd no, take Jack it. Nichols. I couldn't. Ne- no, he's the Lakers. Clippers. I oh, could Clippers. never. I just can't. Like, hey, listen, if the Lakers want to give me tickets, I'd love to see a game. But I'm just not like as a guy because when I first came to LA, everyone find out when I was from Chicago, they were like, you know, that Kobe's better than Michael. That's like a thing that I would talk ad nauseum about. Mm-hmm. So it just it, it made me like I just don't like the Lakers because I don't like their fan. You know what was fun yeah. for me the other day, uh, or not even the other day, this morning. LeBron James scored 50 points. Yeah. Yep. Right? I mean, he's a great basketball Twice in player. the last week. Yeah. yeah. But, but what happened? Uh, they, they didn't win the game. That's right. But also, <laughs> that's right. They still like lost. Uh, Mark McGuire's entire career with the Cardinals. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah his yeah, entire yeah. career 100%. in general. Except for 80, 89. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but the, uh, I went to Twitter, as I want to do, just because I enjoy punishment. To see what people were saying about it, and it was like, "Oh, he's fucking! F- he's scored fifty points in the game fourteen times in his career. That's amazing." Jordan's done it like fucking forty-one times. Well, and the other, the other, the like, other, it's not even close. And by the way, and Kobe had- Bryant is at like fucking twenty-eight or something. Well, here's the other thing too, because they suck LeBron's dick so much in every fucking facet of media oh, that buddy. they put up these weird stats where they're like, "Hey." Most second highest most points scored by a, a player who's 37 years old. And I was like, cool. Just out of curiosity, I looked it up. I was like, who scored more at 37 years old? Kobe Bryant. So you can go fuck yourself. Yeah, well, like, that's, I always say that, um, that, and by the way, I have been a fan of LeBron his entire career. I'll say that. I used mm-hmm. to follow him around when he was in high school. Because like, when I grew up in Chicago, Kevin Garnett played. Mm-hmm. All these dudes. So when yeah, he, he, he left the high school I went to. 
in to South go Carolina. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, Dude I know. Yeah, yeah. Dan, Dan went yeah, to yeah. high school. Yeah, well, fuck yeah. Yeah. So he went to. I mean, obviously made the right decision. There, well, he right? said, but he said it in interviews that he was actually bad in South Carolina. He was like he wasn't. The it best wasn't player. bad. He was very athletic but unskilled. You're and then right. he went to these. He he was playing AAU and shit. But then he went to this fucking fair. What is this, essentially a finishing school, dude? Right? With with Ronnie Fields, yeah. who he shouts out all the time. Yeah. So I was when they were when Ronnie was two years behind him. So when I was a freshman, I think Ronnie was a sophomore, and Kevin was a senior. And so like we have all these guys, but a lot of the guys, um, you know, play just everybody like we had just an unbelievable people that were playing there. So when LeBron was just one or two states over, I took a, a year off just to save up money before I went to LA. I, I saw LeBron play live as a kid. And I'm like, it was Billy Madison with dodgeball. Yeah. This dude. So I'm, let me just say that right off the In bat. The high school gyms. Yes. No shit. Cause they yes. were, they were packed. So I was going to Ohio state at that time. I mean, we were watching were them on packed. fucking ESPN. Yeah. At that yeah. Point. I went to St. Vincent, St. Mary. I saw him play at the tournament in Trenton, New Jersey, locked my keys in my car in sub zero weather outside a crack house. And a cop would not help me. Um, <laughs> so that's a true story. But, uh, but I, I did, I loved him. I thought, I thought the fact that he was able to be, because what Kobe, who I loved Laura Marion, he was just a scoring machine. Nobody could guard him. Yeah. But LeBron at that height, I said, the first thing I noticed, I'm like, his passing. For a guy 6'8", yeah. for him to pass and be ball dominant the way he was, I was like, I'd never seen a kid that young be able to pass with that. Like, a, like he could thread that needle. Like, it was unreal he to He was watch also him. born with a perfect body. I mean, I mean yeah, it's, yeah, just, he, dude, it's the perfect NBA body. You 100%. Could ever ask for. I think he actually suffered from that, though. It's like being too hot so you don't develop a great personality. Like, it's <laughs> – no, I'm for real. Like, his ability to gel and lead a team – is not comparable to the abilities that Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant had. It's not even close. Well, I would say that he has to uh, – He the amount of time that the ball is in his hands – The usage rate is too high. It's very it's high. It's too high, yeah. Yep. It's like – and so the thing but about – But that's a coaching thing too, though, right? It I mean, is, but he's the coach. Whenever somebody's like, isn't this guy the coach? Sure, LeBron's, no, the, LeBron's coach. the coach. Sure, but you're telling me that – Nobody can coach him because Phil Jackson was able to coach both Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. I agree with you, by the way. I think – I do think that – and I'm not going to say better or worse because Jordan to me is GOAT of all mm -hmm. time. But, but, but LeBron has an unreal basketball IQ. Yeah. yeah. Like when you watch him do these plays where the announcer's like – by the way, the, the announcer has the, 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 the depth percept – or the um, – the, to be removed from it and can watch it from a distance and be like, oh yeah, they're running this high pick and roll. LeBron is just sitting there and doing math and going like, well, this is going to work against them. Mm. And then he'll run a play that the announcers called that he should run again mm -hmm. because he knows that statistically that they can't stop. He used to do that to Toronto all the time mm. and they just couldn't stop him. And he goes, okay, this is the play that beats you. It's like yeah. in Mortal Kombat when like Raiden would just keep undercutting. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he would do. He'd be like, well, you guys can't beat me, so I'll just keep doing this play. Yeah. And I was like, that is fucking smart. Yeah, he might be one of the, he might be one of the smartest people players to ever play to be honest a hundred to be honest draymond green is probably right there with him he just doesn't Dude. have anywhere close to the physical talent no he does no. not and he doesn't and his body isn't structured no, the way it's, it's he doesn't have a basketball body no he does he the does. most with what he has like, you know, he's, he's amazing yeah by the way he's got a tight end body not a basketball. exactly I said, I said steph curry was mvp of the league and draymond green was the mvp of the of the Warriors. Yeah. yeah. Like, dude, without, because you're looking at them now, and mm -hmm. I love those guys, but like, they're missing Draymond Green. Yeah. 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 yeah like, yeah. Clay can be out, but Draymond No, can't, but which not. It's funny Dray. because Clay's the second best shooter of all time. It's a, but it's, but it's 6'5, but with Jordan Poole, like, and I love Clay, but it's like you're yeah. seeing them be able to make up those deficiencies, but there's just something about a garbage man mm -hmm. and that skill set who's willing to put himself in and play defense. I mean, he's, what, Draymond's only like 6'5". He's, he's listed as 6'6". Six, six. He is 6'5". Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. It's amazing. We're saying yeah. the exact... You're, right. Yes. But it's he like, plays like any... Somebody plays that's... like 7-footer, dude. Some dude, a dude that's fucking that height and also a relatively girthy dude. He's not Absolutely. a slim guy. He plays the 1 through 5 on defense. Well, I saw his dick pic, and it wasn't that girthy. I mean, not, was, not his penis. It was okay. I mean, like okay. His, his dick pic was disappointing. It was soft. It was a... That, it was, was, a, that was a Brett Favre. He's the black... Brett Favre of dick pics, where it's just like, all right, is that the one you really wanted to send well, in? Well, by the way, I don't like that Brett Favre was the, the ad guy for Wrangler. Really? He, before or after, though? I don't. That's a good question. I want to get. was it before. What about, what's his name? Uh, uh, um, uh, I'm never going to remember his name now, who had just like a hog down to his knee. Uh, 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 football Greg, player? Greg Oden. Greg oh, Greg, Greg Oden, Oden. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but he's, you know, his, his, that maybe that's what fucked his knees up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it was just it was going back and forth yeah. like a pendulum. Like yeah. remember in Karate Kid Part Two when they do this cicada? Yeah. That was just like yeah. Yeah. he by the way, he's a professional student now. Every time I go back to Ohio State, he's still there. 
I, you see him at every game, every function. All Can't somebody things. just make him a coach on the basketball they team? They did. So they, they did. So they made him an assistant coach, so he's at the games. Uh, speaking of college basketball, college basketball fans, join the action on the court during the biggest tournament of the year with DraftKings Sportsbook. Turn your team's victory into your own big win. New customers can bet $5 on any team to win $200,000. And brief, I'm kidding. It's two hundred dollars. Two hundred thousand dollars. It's fucking crazy, crazy. I just want to make sure you're paying attention. Two hundred dollars in free bets. If they do, it's that simple. If they win, you win. If uh, sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, you can still join the college hoops action with DraftKings pools. Everyone can play free. Uh, pools are March long for a shot at a share of over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in prizes. That's where the two fifty comes in. You got to win the whole goddamn thing. Okay. But if you win one of those first games, you get 200 bucks. Simply join a pool and answer questions like, who will make it into the next round and who will hit the most three-pointers, then track your results. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code BROS and bet $5 on any college hoops team to win, and you get $200 in free bets if they do. If they win, you win with promo code BROS this week at DraftKings Sportsbook. 21 plus. Restrictions apply. See... Details uh, and the details of this. If someone you know has a gambling problem or crisis counseling, uh, referral services can be accessed by going to 1 800 Gambler, 1 800 426 2537. That is in Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Wyoming, 1 uh, 800 Next Step, Arizona, 1 800 522 4700, Colorado, and New oh, Hampshire. Boy. There's a lot of them. 888-789-7777. That's because they've, they've gotten huge in all these states. That's why. Uh, gambling started when they, when they did the Supreme Court ruling about three and a half years ago. But you have to go state by state and have one brick and mortar open in every single state. A lot of people don't know that uh, if... So that's 1-800-GAMBLER. 1-900-GAMBLER is... It's a whole a different. It's a phone sex line with Kenny Rogers. Yeah. I was just going to say, with, it's yeah. only Kenny Rogers. Like it's, you can hear fried chicken cooking in the background. And it's... I mean, look... I. Makes me hungry. You know, yeah. Can I tell you what's crazy about the one nine hundred, the, the Kenny Rogers line? I've called him many times. Mm. That he, people go, is this a good investment? And you know what? Unfortunately, the gambler he broke even. It's not. Well, you got to know when to hold him, right? He yeah. he, he went out though at the right time. He got terrible plastic surgery, and then he he got off right before COVID. Started. He should have just stayed. He so should have just good. he yeah. should have just moved to LA and joined the the acolytes there because like you you've lived there for a while. You lived there for a long time yeah. as well. There's this thing with like 45 plus year old LA women. It's like having bad plastic surgery is a status symbol almost. Have you noticed that? Like there's there's very obviously bad plastic surgery done, puffy stuff, and I don't understand it. Well, I do, there's so there are so many plastic surgeons in LA, uh-huh. and it's like because every face is a snowflake, it's a little different. Yeah, yeah. you got to imagine that. Like I'm wondering what the referrals look like. Like who is the face on the website that people were like, yo, yeah. you want what this girl had or you want what this guy had? Trust me, this guy can do that. See, this whatever. is why we need to get link tracking on their fucking website. That way you can tell where people stop scrolling, where they click, all that stuff. Dude, absolutely. Or it's like <laughs> Angie. That would, that would be fucking and like so interesting it to would. see that information. Or have like an app like Angie's List, but for faces. <laughs> It'd be great. There's a dick pick up on screen. Obviously, we can't show that on YouTube. Whose dick is that? Greg Oden, right? It's Greg Oden. Greg Oden. Yeah. Come on. I'd recognize that dick anywhere. What kind of Buckeye are you? Here's the thing. I didn't see that one. That's a great one. <laughs> that's, that's the name of his dick. That's a great one. He great doesn't look Buckeye. that tall. Oh. He's 7'2". That doesn't look like a 7'2 man. That looks like a, a nice 6'2 frame on that. That look means at he's, that that. he's very proportionate. He's slinging, yeah. like, he's slinging like eight inches flaccid. Damn, right. dude. That's the thing. Like, that looks like, a, looks like a big but not too big dick on a giant man. Yeah. Look, look at uh, Lasro Lopez. Even he looked over at yeah, it. Yeah, he's getting hard, too. Look you can't see it from that, that angle. He's dude. asking if we can do that tattoo next. <laughs> I yeah, thought it was can. a picture of me from last summer for a second. Not even close. You don't get yeah. that dark. Not, you look at oh. that. Whoa, is that on screen now? <laughs> oh, thank God. What you do <laughs> is like, you get that tattoo on you of everything but the dick, and just your dick is his dick in the middle of that tattoo. I would like he a seven smaller. foot two man. This looks like a LeBron James, I, though, not a seven foot I feel, two guy. I feel like you've just done blackface at that point, though. You know what I don't like about this? The, the phone, I feel like he's holding an iPad. 
<laughs> and <laughs> that phone looks in really, really small. tiny. It's, just, it's, it's like the a flat tiny screen phone, TV yeah. that we're showing right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's yeah. a fucking, that's a nice to meet you. That's a first interview, Dick, where you're, you're shaking. It's oh, a firm dude, shake. That's, he like, doesn't hey. wear underwear. He's got he's to wear a diaper. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, if my dick looked like that, I would definitely put this picture in my resume. Yes. Oh, are you like, kidding no me? Question. And I would have my a, Twitter profile, yeah. brother. I would put it with the uh, the uh, this, um, the watermarks on it. Oh yeah, because you want to get some residuals from World Star. <laughs> oh come on, obviously. dude. So for the, uh, the audio Star? the audio crowd, it says World Star Hip Hop. Like they're taking credit for it. Of like, oh yeah, World. No, dude. Everybody saw this. Remember how movie. kids, like teenagers, used to run up on people, <laughs> and punch them in the face, and knock Yo, them out, yeah. and yell World Star. Yeah. World Star. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, man. Bro. This is why you need to own guns. Yeah. God Just, damn, that's a beautiful hog, Not to though. shoot them, but they know that they might get shot. Yeah, come on. That's you, like, yeah, that's a, it could be a possibility. How much yeah. do you need this <laughs> in your life? They should put him on euphoria. I and mean, that's a beautiful Let me tell you what's crazy about this. Is he at a timeshare? <laughs> I think it looks like a college apartment, to be honest. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. I, really? It's not, it's not that nice. Everything's kind of bright, and you're like, he right, does great. seem like the kind of guy that could get tricked into buying a timeshare, though, to be yes. honest. Yes. Yeah. You don't have a timeshare, do you? No. Thank God. But I sell them. <laughs> and uh, if I sold Greg Odin. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I said, I called it a two bedroom, and I go, yeah, it's big enough for you and that hog. <laughs> I said, it's the only livestock you're allowed to have on the premises. Hi, I'm Jonathan. <laughs> God damn, that's a beautiful dick. Way to go, Greg Oden. Yeah. His knees might not have lasted, but that dick did. Well, they couldn't handle the fucking weight of that thing. No. no. Obviously. That's a beautiful It was like hog. playing Pong. <laughs> His knees were just playing Pong with that fucking hose. Yeah. God damn. That, well, I should have, it's more intense. like centipede. Centipede, yeah. Come on. Well, it's. Wavy. That thing is exactly. intense. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Should we, I mean, look, we talk about Hope Solo's asshole all the time. Should we bring Jonathan Kite in on this for episode 1000? I, I for a second, I thought you were going to be like, we talk about Hope Solo's asshole. Should we talk about Jonathan Kite's asshole? No. Do you have an asshole pick? No. Oh, I thought oh. you, I honestly, I, I'm a little high. I'm not going to lie. I thought you were going to say, <laughs> do you have an asshole? Like, then, because I, I certainly do. I, I do assumed, as well. I yeah. assumed most people did, and I was wondering if you didn't. I, no, I do. At that I do. point, I do. You don't have a belly button. You're like one of those clones. No, I knew. A, uh, so we knew a girl like that. Uh, shit, actually, she's the lead singer of the Butcher Babies. You know that group? Mm-mm. Uh, a friend of ours. Um, so she was born without nails and a belly button. Um, so yeah, so no that's fingernails. Dope. Shit, I probably shouldn't be saying this. So that's Hope Solo's asshole, by the way. Okay. Um, her nudes leaked, and uh, that's what she led with. That was the first one. Wow. She was like, hey, this is, this is who I I'm am. I'm not going to lie to you. It looks like a Lemonheads ad. <laughs> hey, guys, pucker up. I feel like she's challenging you to climb Mount Puss. <laughs> Wait, can I be honest with you? Is, is that not the, the Sand Beast from Jedi? <laughs> <laughs> You're the Sarlacc? Oh the Sarlacc. Thank yeah. you. Better, better than that. Wait, can, no, no. Be honest with me. Is, is, <laughs> is Lando not creeping out of that thing? No, it's, it's uh, Boba Fett. <laughs> No, Boba he's done. Fett. He's in there. No, Boba Fett and the new Boba Fett series crawls out of oh, the... Oh, uh, I haven't watched Starlight it yet. Pit. We've, got, yeah. we've got some people in the studio. Marcus, you couldn't take it. You cringed a little bit at that one. Was that too much for you? Is that too graphic for you? If, if you got that, Jonathan, would you be amped or... Like, are you married, girlfriend? No, single. Okay, and by great. the way, I am amped. And <laughs> I'm just looking at a photo of it. <laughs> yeah, but Holy you know what? Shit. It's okay. I'm a, I'm a Jew. I love the deli. You know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. like... Just don't add cheese or anything. <laughs> no, like please. No, no, no. no. I don't want a Reuben. I'll take a Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Are you Orthodox or no? No. Thank God, dude. So our CFO I will is... fucking is through a sheet, though. I will. Okay. Well, that's fine. For Halloween. So our, our, uh, our CFO is an Orthodox Jew. They're Muzzle. off every, like a one full day out of the goddamn week. I didn't really understand. Now I understand. And I was like, dude, no wonder you guys are so fucking nervous all the time. You only work like 200 days out of the year. The other 100 you're I think working. we're nervous because of history. <laughs> but um, <laughs> the shot in the dark, <laughs> which is also the, my Anne Frank book, is called The Shot in the Dark. And uh, we're big Francophiles here, you know. That, I right? love yeah. it, dude. Yeah, I love. No, I went. I, I, uh, I, I don't know. What is the conversation? Just real quick about about Hope's hole. Uh, so Hope's hole is asshole. <laughs> this is what she led with. It's been an ongoing bit on the show. Oh for... my god! How do we not make a Star Wars joke? A New Hope. Oh boy. A Guys, new hole. We'll edit it in post. Boy, edit yeah. it in post. Yeah, we'll, we'll flip that back. <laughs> Can you just, I mean, that certainly nice. somebody's fucking photoshopped the star like pit over her asshole for it, right? And if they haven't, shame on you, internet. Yeah. Exactly. What the fuck are you doing today? Yeah. What's the best nude you've gotten? Because oh. you've got a bunch of, of, of fans, I'm sure, from like Two Broke Girls and everything else. Over the years, I'm sure people have sent you some shit. Uh, what was the best nude you got? The best nude I ever got was... 
from Dame Maggie Smith. No, I the best. <laughs> I, I would get him a, a bunch from from like random girls in uh, in Europe. Like just I don't know what there was a. At some point, maybe somebody said like send this guy nudes or whatever. But I was just getting them. They're hot. That's the only reason I give a shit about Ukraine is they have the hottest women. And I'm like, oh please, let's not kill the hot ones. They are amazingly hot. I don't. Amazing. I, I don't. I, I don't care about Ukraine at all. I mean, yeah. I, I just I wanted to say on. that in case. Yeah, anybody. of course. Has anybody? Have you guys talked about it on here before? No, oh. not once. <laughs> not once. <laughs> <laughs> No, but we're in the camp of like, look, it's somebody else's war at this point. Like, we've been in enough of these. We're, we're, we don't need to I be just the police don't, I don't, the entire I don't, world. I don't trust our government in any way, regardless of who's in power, to yeah. deploy our military. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Like, I've been there. No, I I've know. I, I, absolutely. Like, you have. I'm done with these. For sure. For sure. Now, with these European dick pics, do you think it's maybe because uh, Oleg was so convincing? I do. You know, and I used to do a joke on stage about that where I go, you know, like people would come up to me thinking I was the guy, and I was like, you know, that this is a sitcom, not a documentary. <laughs> so, like, I really like do you start think, talking, speaking. English I'd be like, hey, what's up, guys? And they, they were like, I had a few people go, what the fuck? Yeah. And when I would tour, especially overseas, mm. I, I I toured China, and um, I remember they were like, they were <laughs> like, what the fuck is going on? Was it weird? No, it was awesome. You can't fuck around. China was awesome. I had a, I had, I was in Shanghai twice, and I went to Hong Kong once, and I had a fucking blast. I've never been. I've how never how been. are the audiences though? Yeah. Well, there we were the number one comedy in the world mm-hmm. for like six, seven years. Yeah. yeah I don't yeah, know what it is time. now. So, so um, they were in. I mean, here's the thing: when you go, when people know who you are, like when you guys go mm-hmm. places, the drinking bros, mm-hmm. you you, it's not a normal experience. No, no, it's people weird. Are, exactly. Yeah. So it's like they're giving you the best of everything, and they want you to leave here with good feelings. Feelings, good memories, good thoughts. Spread the word. So for me, I d- would I would never say that I had like an, a normal trip to China. It was like they took care of everything. They were so fucking nice. Mm-hmm. Like we we went <laughs> crazy places, and I was I lived in the Langham Hotel for like two weeks the first time I went there. No shit. It was great. Okay. They were incredibly kind. Yeah. Well, I don't think we've ever had anybody in the show who spent time in China. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. I went back about a year after that, and uh, yeah, I did like a Domino's commercial. Um, I did stand up at this beautiful theater called The Pearl that was occupied by, I believe, the Japanese during the Second World War, mm-hmm. and then it went back. It is a gorgeous fucking theater. It's all red. It looks like a vaudeville theater, and that's where I performed. Do they get cool. the jokes, though? So they like that I exist. They probably like impressions. They do. And yeah. here's, let me tell you, so a lot of expats there, a yeah, like, yeah. ton of them. Mm-hmm. Great. So like from all over can, you know, Canada, mm-hmm. America, uh, the UK, whatnot, it's great. But also, the funniest thing about it is, they were like, what impressions do you do? And I'm like talking to the woman who's setting it up, who's Chinese, mm. and I was like, you know, I do this, 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 and this. And they go, can you do Jackie Chan or like Jet Li? And I go, that just sounds racist. I go, I... <laughs> but that's not, Asian people don't care about no, They don't that. care I, about yeah, racism, all. Yeah. I was yeah. making a joke, you're absolutely right. You but must... yeah, no, I know you probably felt that way. I but did. But from their perspective, from their, no, no, they no, don't it's true, and it's like, and they, like, like Russell we, Peters. We get, we get butthurt about, like, uh, uh, fucking Matt Damon starring in The Great Wall, and everybody in America is like, oh, it's fucked up, man. But it was and people in Asia are like, yeah, finally, Sh- yeah, we get Matt shit. Damon. And by the way, he wasn't supposed to be Asian. No, 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 we no. Just, no, no. We just take that story and run it all the way into the ground, and you're yeah. just like, dude, you don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> no, I agree with you 100. percent So they were incredibly nice, and I, I had a blast. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Best thing that came so, out of it got a 10 year work visa on my passport. No oh, shit. shit, that's dope. So wow. would you go back? 100. Oh, percent That's awesome. So you're a big fan of the Communist Party, then, is dude? What you're I, yeah. I, I think we're all equal at this fucking thing. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love. They were again. They didn't talk to me about. They, they didn't try to like, they were just, they were happy that I was there. Mm. No, I did do a uh, Shanghai Shack. No, no, I did a Mao Zedong joke on stage mm-hmm. about um, smoking. And it wasn't even like an offensive thing. I would never do that. The room went silent. Like they uh, were like, you're not yeah. allowed to laugh at that. No, Mao, you're not, you're Mao not. is a deity. Yeah, so you yeah absolutely. That, yeah. And I, but but they, they weren't, I don't think any of them were offended by it. They were just like, we will not. Yeah, they're just like, move on to yeah. the next joke. It, that's exactly but that, right. Move that's, on. That's what I hear about pretty much. Everywhere in the world, the people usually are pretty nice. It's governments that are fucked up. 100%. Governments and then uh, our own Ameri- and the media. Uh, America. Because I'm, yeah. I'm sure you're still touring everywhere all the I am. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure, like, dude, the way that the cancel culture and everything has gone here, people take jokes more seriously now here than they probably do in China, where it's like they, they don't really give a shit. Well, I think that you, they, the, the weird thing is when I was there, they, 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 you know, you have to have a VPN, right, yeah. to like hack everything. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I said to them, why do they have the VPN and they allow certain shows through? They, there's like a weirdness to the to pop culture there that it, because it's not like the K-pop or the J-pop, you know, like where there's there's like there's there's a there's a there is a an idea that the government is allowing certain things in because it benefits from it. Mm. Like they think that House of Cards, they're learning about American politics. Ah, and that's why that they you, allowed it to be. And it's like, that doesn't make any sense because I made a joke. I'm like, that's like saying everybody should watch Jurassic Park so we can learn about lizards. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, that's not really how this works. But their government at the time was convinced that they were getting secrets about the American government through that show. Oh, no boy. shit. And so it's hard there. It, it, they, so they are very protective about what you are and are not allowed to say. <laughs> you can't, Gigi, you can't say anything about him. You know, so it's like, I, I think that at least we can say whatever we want, make fun of Biden, make fun of Trump, mm. make fun of whoever, Hillary, it doesn't matter. Yeah. That's the best thing. And I do think that people, I think that there is like a, a, a woke narrative of like wanting to control something that is happening in more cities than not. Yeah. And I think, oh, sorry, uh, less more. cities than it, they're, they're, they're louder about it. You go to New York, you go to LA, yeah. you know, but then you go to the middle of the country, you tell these same jokes. People are like, yeah, we know you're joking, man. Yeah. Like, we don't think that Imagine this Imagine being offended by a joke. Dude. I know. But they, they that's but like, their argument that's is like, they go, it's like drowning in a puddle. Well, like they the, go, it normalizes something. And I go, there, there's so many examples that I personally am, have experience with where like everybody's being made fun of. And there was a guy in the front row who was in a, a wheelchair and, and then nobody made fun of him. And he was like, well, that was weird. Why didn't you guys do that after the show? They're like, did you have a good time? And he goes, they're, he, they're like, yeah, man. Yeah. They're like, well, he didn't make fun of me. And he goes, well, no, no, we didn't want to make fun of you. He goes, if, if you want to be like everything else, like them making fun of him wouldn't have hurt or helped. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. he goes, it would have made him more inclusive. He goes, I would have felt more like everybody else if you had ripped on me too. 30 right? Rock, 30 Rock did a bit about this, right? It was that episode where uh, Twofer and and Tracy Jordan get into an argument or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Um, and Tracy Jordan keeps trying to make the point that old school racism is coming back. And he's like, did you see the fucking Sloven Shield commercial? Like they used a black guy to play the, the burglar. So that's how you know. And, and then uh, somebody else made the point, well, maybe they're just like treating everybody the same. They're like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah that's kind of weird. Well, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. but it's true because you go when you see a commercial for something. If it is about crime, they will have. You know how I know? Because I did it. I was a copper thief in a commercial. You, oh, I thought you meant. I, I, dude, I thought for a second you were going real life, and I was like, holy shit. Well, you're he's the probably guy. burgled. No, yeah, dude, I'm. A time it or looks two. like you know burgled a timer. Brother, you know how much barbecue I just stole? <laughs> <laughs> Smuggled into my colon <laughs> from Terry Black's. Probably yeah. about eighty dollars worth. Dude, yeah, it was shit. delish. Amazing. It's so good. Amazing. I, you know, I've been here last year. I was here five, six times. Yeah. Obviously, you guys yeah. are great hanging with you guys. Mm -hmm. I never had good barbecue. And I know, it, and I only, so one time I had a show, two shows next to each other, and I was like, I got to eat. I hadn't eaten all day, and I'm jacked up on coffee. And I went to a food truck with barbecue, mm. and when I tell you, instantly, my body was like, no! Yeah, you, you shit your pants? Almost. Yeah. That's what happens, dude. Some, uh, when people from L.A. come in and they have really good barbecue for the first time, they're just like, oh, my God, where's the bathroom? And I'm like, it's in the back. And I always know every single time. They're just not used to it. They're not used to that No, no, that was just grease. bad. The, the thing is, that there was so much fat Oh, you just got it. a fucking shitty one? Th that's what I'm saying. It was <laughs> shitty. I never had it till just now, till the barbecue you guys provided. There they, isn't they, that yeah. much terrible barbecue in, in Austin. No, I know. I said, how are the odds? It's like, it was like throwing a dart at the ocean and well, hitting the sand. Well, especially Austin. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, uh, Austin, I mean. yeah. Austin is particularly good at, at brisket. And I love, as a Jew, as a Jew, I love the brisket very sure. much. I mean, sometimes you have to brine it and, you know, and then slice it into deli meat afterwards. But Which, by the way, I yeah. love. Yeah. It's really I, that's why I love the white bread shit here. Mm. Oh, yeah. They always the give pickles, you, you guys the pickles. pickles. So we got the pickles. Dude, you got the mustard, the little BBQ. I love that shit, The whole baby. thing. Uh, my wife the says smear. hello, by the way. I love your wife. How is she? Uh, she says, great. She goes, make eye contact with them. Let them know I love them. And I, I said, for sure. And uh, she told me a Don't funny... Don't lose eye contact while you say this to I me. I won't. I won't. She told me a funny story when, we, when, when you guys were out that somebody was trying to claim, like, ownership of you. Uh, and they were like, oh, hey, I work for the show. No one works for the show, by the way. I mean, it's, it's just us. Yeah. So it's just Dan and I. And when I heard that, when she told me that story later, yeah. I was like... Oh, uh, yeah. no, no, no. Nope. Yeah, it was fun. I randomly ran into her just hanging out in Austin. Yes. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah. And then the other person, who we'll, we'll talk about off air, I yeah. was like, don't know, don't know him that well. Yeah. Don't know who that is. And like, I'm sure you get that all the time in LA. We don't get it that much here in Texas where people are like, oh, that's my relationship or contact. Yeah. Or my celebrity friend, and vice yep. versa. Yeah. We don't give a shit here on this no, goddamn yeah, yeah. thing. And it's like, I'm sure you get it all the time. 
um, because you're you're on huge hit shows, not only Two Broke Girls, but uh, with with Jamie Foxx. Dad, stop embarrassing me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that was number one in the world. Four days straight. Yeah. Is then, there a more talented dude in the world no, than Jamie Foxx? No, no, there I mean, is for not. Real. I swear to you, I'm telling you, when people, it's funny, and I know I'm biased because we're such like I love that man, mm. and he he really. I told you the last time he yeah, discovered yeah. me. Like yeah, yeah. without him, there's no you know right. where my position. He really helped me so much. But when you but get, it came back over the court, like he discovered you, and then five years later, you got that. Role or some a, shit, two, right? a year later. A year later. By, yeah, yeah, but here's the craziest thing: when you real talent is, there are people that like turn it on and off, which, by the way, is impressive even in of itself to mm. shift gears. But just hanging with him all the time, and you just like see his talent, you're just like it's like it's it's a bottomless well. Yes, there's so much. It's like a, unbelievable. There's so many people that are good at different things, yeah. like acting. Or singing, music, or dad, like he's great or, at all of the things. Or writing, Stand or up. producing. So Everything. every now and again, somebody. Every now and again, somebody's good at one or two of those things. Maybe three. Maybe he's good at everything that he does. It's, a, it's you, very bizarre. You know what's oh, the, the thing about it though that is the most impressive, and I'm I know I'm not the first to say it, but when you hang with him, he is a man of the people and of the man of the kings. Yeah, like he never. Re- Forgot where he came from. Mm-hmm. He's the most generous fucking human in the world, and he is humble. And when you see a guy like that, like we were at dinner one night, and this guy just came over like really hammered. It was just like, hey, man, it's my wife's birthday over there. Can you just wave it to her? Dude literally got up, sat next to her, and spent 20 minutes with her talking about her life. Yeah. And I was just like, at that, I mean, listen, that's nice of anybody, but at the level that he's at... To, he remembers where he came from and, and what got him there. And he's just the greatest. He's Texas. a fantastic he dude. Yeah. Harold Texas. Harold Texas, yeah. yeah. Texas, Texas, baby. Yeah. Um, but the question I have is this. It was number one in the world, yeah. and then it didn't get his second season. Well, I what, think... What happened there? So, uh, two things. I think that he is the busiest person alive. He's it's, in, it's either him or Dwayne Johnson, one of those no, two 100%. guys. It's Seriously, a, the way, they, they're like in every, like, I'm just looking around. Kevin Hart, yeah. Like, why is, he, why is there three different billboards it's or three different movies? movies. What the fuck, That man? are all made. So he's doing a movie right now with, with uh, Tommy Lee Jones in New Orleans. Oh, shit. They, dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's working, and I think with scheduling, with TV, there's, there, you know, and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot that I wasn't privy to, not being a producer on the show, just being, you know, on it, that it's a time thing. It's like... You have to take so much time to shoot a TV show. TV show is a big commitment. It's yeah. a huge commitment. And people don't realize that. By the way, the money is good. He doesn't need the money. No, You're right. like, yeah, but the fame is good. He doesn't, he doesn't need, need the it. fame. No. no. So he, what, and, and I know that he has launched his own production company. He just launched that show. I think it's called Million Dollar Wheels with our buddy RD. Yes. Mm, shit. Who wires only. Just saw, I just saw the- That's uh, the next move, by the way. It's not like we've gone from being, being a hyphenate to- own, no, running he, your own yeah, production he's a brand, studio. bro. Every, it's like, uh, I just saw the trailer. Kevin, Kevin Costner, all that 1883 shit. It's share, run through him. It's, he runs And that's up. Jamie. Jamie, by the way, that's our thing is that I don't, I mean, I think he gets credit, but not enough. He's so goddamn smart, it's insane. Like, he will, he will come up with an idea for something, and he's like, no, this is how we're now going to do it. And then it just, it, it moves through so fast. Like, the way they moved that show through, that guy RD had been around forever. He was already like a famous person in his own right. And coolest dude, hooked up everybody, you know, a bad bunny, everybody with like these insane custom cars. Mm-hmm. And they were like, it's like Pimp My Ride, but like, the, but without the gimmicks. Mm. And I love Pimp My Ride, don't get me wrong. That yeah. was the coolest show, West Coast Custom Shout Out. Exhibit doing meta stuff is dude, pretty funny. was the funniest yeah. fucking shit in the yeah. world. But to see Jamie and RD go around... It's like it's goddamn like speed racer shit. Yeah, and it's cool because they they do have those friends. You have to make those friendships up. It's oh like, yeah, yeah. It's like no two chains coming over. Yeah, and whatever, we, whoever. And the reason I brought this up, by the way, is we had Jack Carr on the show last week. Uh, the Terminal very, List, very is famous out author. Soon. Yeah, he's got the Terminal List coming out on yeah. Amazon. Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt is the lead. And wow. my my first question was, how do you get a second season out of that? And he goes, man, it's it's going to be tough because Chris is shooting. You know, there's jo- Jurassic World. The second, so third, the second, months. third, fourth, and fifth seasons will be easy because they'll be able to book it. But right now, when it's a pilot or a new series, you don't know if it's going to get renewed. You can't lock Chris Pratt down with a maybe. No, and that's the thing with with Jamie, especially yeah. when you look at him. And by the way, uh, with obviously with all of these um, 
with the power that he has, he gets more power because obviously he's so successful with something. So that you just pe- more people want to work with him. Yeah. It's like I said to him one night we were just hanging out, and I was like, because he was telling me about some stuff that he has coming up, and I just sort of laughed and I go, dude, if you never had a career before right now and just moving forward, I go, I think you'd be equally as famous yeah. for yeah. the stuff that he has coming up. Mm-hmm. Even if he didn't have the Academy Award, didn't have In Living Color, didn't wasn't a global movie star box office sensation, didn't have the Grammys. I go, what you have coming up? <laughs> so that type of stuff, and he gets to set his own schedule for that, whereas a TV show, I know, I've been on them, like, you can't. There, like, 70 people's schedules have to line up. Yeah. 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 So yeah. And you have to know, like, usually you have to know at least 18 months in advance before you can even schedule it. Well, yeah, you, right? have, to, you have to write yeah. the season. You have to did it, did it, you have to do all mm-hmm. this shit, and then to get the actors to fly in. Lopez, and, hang on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, keep Guy, going. Keep going, and yeah. You, and you need, you need to... Um, have dates and it has to be SAG regulated and yeah. everything ha- and then you have to set up the press it's so much because we did the first season and the press tour we did was just like I can't imagine like for us and obviously we all have other stuff going on mm. but he's Jamie Foxx I know yeah. and he, by the way he did every talk show Yes, uh, all, all uh, he always things. does. That, he does though. all the things. Yeah. Which, by the way, he has to have that much fucking charisma. He doesn't has. He doesn't have to. He could literally just post it on. That's Instagram what I'm saying. He does, but the charisma when he goes on Jimmy Kimmel. And he, he has this amazing thing where he has a backpack that's a boombox and he has his own company because of it. Yeah. So he takes the party with him. And it's like, he'll just roll up to a restaurant and just put that thing on, start playing it. And it's like, it's literally like a, it is a, like a Bud Light commercial from the 80s. It, it is. Like a boring a tea party, party just became the fucking best place to be in, in town. Yeah. It's so fun. I think he and Kanye should do an album together. Uh, well, let's pan I mean, over to. Somebody should record that whole process. I do. I do too. That would be the most amazing shit that's Maybe, ever happened. Hang on, they did, and I'll get to that in a second. Let, yeah, let's Lopez, see this, did you finish? Do we it's got done. it? It's done. No there. way. There it is. Show that for the for the audience. Wow. There. You know what Look the really that the, dude. the really funny part of this is going to be if she runs in twenty four and wins and wins. Then you were you, then people you are going to think that this is a memorial. Look at that, dude. So underneath it is the tweets on there and all that stuff. You know Does what it kind of looks like? Stamp? It looks like a milk carton, and you're like, "Have you seen my kid? <laughs> Your left leg looks like an Amber Alert, bro." <laughs> God damn, Will XX, dude, that is amazing work. By the way, that is incredible. I got here a few Holy hours shit. ago when you were starting. This dude is Look un- that fucking thing, believable. Dude. That's about my God. I mean, it's identical, dude. But the speed at which you did it, you've only been here. Dude, that's, that is insane. Yeah, that was what, about three and a half hours, I guess. That looks like a goddamn facsimile. That is unbelievable, Will. Uh, well, look at that, though. What does that look like? Look at that. Look at uh, that. Take that it all in. By the way. Oh, no. Did we need take to it s- all in. Look at that. Drink it in. You look like Jody High Roller. <laughs> 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 I love it, dude. I love that shirt, too, baby. That's amazing. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you, brother. That shirt looks sick, dude. Hey, where is that look shirt from? Yeah, where's that shirt from? So Savage it? Nation or some shit mm. like that? I don't fucking know. It looked Dude, great. Yeah, you, you look great, Uzis baby. on it. You, did you like it because of the Uzis because you're Jewish? I like the Juzies. Oh, wait, no, those are, uh, those are MP7s and Uzis. There's, yeah. there's Juzies. Juzies. Well, I'll tell you what. You go uh, piss. You can come back, and then we'll have Will and, and you on the show. Uh, real quick, um, I just finished watching that Kanye doc, uh, Genius, on, on Netflix. You were talking about uh, him and uh, Jamie Foxx doing a thing. Yeah. So they, the, the guy that filmed it... Had all the old footage. It's unreal. And Jamie Foxx is in it. So. A lot. You see Jamie Foxx early on helping out an unfamous Kanye and just sitting in the studio all day long. <laughs> and everything he did improv-wise ended up on that album word for word. So you know, um, that famously, I'm, I'm like literally just a Wikipedia entry for Jamie right now, but you know he helped Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran has said it a million times. And the guy, who, the, guy the lead singer of Rascal Flats, like... Jamie is so good. I said, you should, I go, you're in the wrong business, bro. I go, you should be betting on horses because he is so good at picking somebody out. And he's like, that guy or her, that she's a winner. Like, cause I'm telling you like, and I say that like humbly, but also like, dude, I fucking love him. Cause he believed in me when mm-hmm. nobody would believe in me. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I bet on that guy. Yeah. And he took me under his wing, but he's done it with people far more talented and successful than me. And Kanye was one of those dudes. And he'll jump up for anywhere. I, I don't know if I told this story before, but uh, in 2011, my buddy produced uh, from college produced uh, Wolf of Wall Street. And so they did a huge launch in Cannes, and uh, uh, they hired Kanye to do the launch party. There was only about 200 of us there. He was only obligated to do an hour, Kanye, and he yeah. ended up doing two and a half. Wow. Jamie Foxx is in the crowd. Mm. Kanye looks out, and he goes, Jamie, just come on up and help me for the next one. Unprepared or whatever. Yes. Dude. And he just went up, launched Gold Digger, the two of them, and it's like he's – the fucking best. I still think, like, to me, that song, and especially that VMA performance with the, the outfits yeah. that the two of them are wearing, yep. what people, we, 
it's weird. And maybe because I'm an old head, I'm like, ah, it's not really iconic anymore. Like, I don't see any stuff that's like, you, you look back in the day when people were really doing shit. I go, I still remember those two yeah. doing that. The way they look with that light, that purple oh, yeah. jacket on, and the gloves. I was like, these mother, these guys are killing it. Killing it. Absolutely. And he could have it. had a, I, I feel like Jamie Foxx could have been an actor or a stand up or a writer yeah. or a musician and had. Like a Hall Just of Fame, the same career, had a yeah. Hall of Fame career in either one of those, and, and yep. but he did all of them. Yeah, I totally agree with you. That's it's, pretty wild. It's it is weird, and you listen to play piano, and like the first time I ever met him, this is how generous of a guy we were doing. He cast me in this thing, uh -huh. and he was like, um, and every time he would sit and play in the piano, we were shooting like late night, like three, four in the morning at this bar in Silver Lake, and he would just play, and I literally sat to him and I go, every time I see you play the piano, and I didn't even know him that well, mm -hmm. he, I would go, I'd always be like, Georgia, oh, Georgia. Yeah. And he started playing. Georgia. And me and him played Georgia and did it together while he played on the piano. You almost yeah. wish you had a video of I that. said, I was like, <laughs> I said to him, and I started, I had this look, I go, what the fuck is happening right now? <laughs> I was like, that was crazy. And the fact that he would just do that and not be like, yeah, kid, or whatever, you know? And like I said, I did not know him that well. Yeah. But I said to him, I was like, yo, I, I, I was like, I just thought that movie was... As good as, as, especially as an impressionist, I'm like, that's as good as you can be. Yeah, and he won the Oscar for it. He won every award, by the way. It's one of the only award uh, performances in the history of film that won every uh, major award it was up for. Mm. Yes, it's like Screen Actors like, Guild, Golden Globes, but all BAFTA, that shit. everything. Yeah. He was one of, I think, at the time, five people in the history of film. Yeah, it, it was, at it that was level, incredible. Had been won that I think there's awards. one challenge left. I think he needs to play Anne Frank. He's got to. Brother. That's the only one in left. The, in the modern day? Yeah. That's the only one left. Dude. Have you ever have we ever told him about Trans Frank? No, I don't I don't think you've no. heard about Trans Oh dude, we were this close to shooting a movie called Trans Frank. I mean it was we were, I, it was hours away. Yeah. Dead serious. And the uh, the our one of our old co hosts uh, owns Black Rifle Coffee. Yeah. And uh, Jared. Yeah. Well Jared, Evan, and Matt, and Evan was like, Hey dude, I think we should pull this <laughs> at the last I, I I got the call around like eleven or midnight. And the, the GoFundMe was about to start at 9 a.m. And, and keep in mind, the last one, we'd raised $1.2 million in 48 yeah. hours. So, like, we knew we would get the money for it. Yeah. And he just goes, man, this coffee thing's going good. And he mm. goes, I don't know if this would come back to haunt me. And it was, because we had a movie poster, everything. I mean, the whole video was done for, for GoFundMe. I mean, it was literally going to publish at 9 a.m. And he goes, I think we should pull it. And uh, I don't, can you bring up that poster of Transfer? I would love to see that poster. Oh, dude. Oh, dude. So... But put it up full screen for the audience oh again. Oh, my God. Because, I mean, it's one of those things where when you see it... It looks like a Grindhouse movie. It, exactly. And that's, what it, that's how it was going to be. So it, it was... It uh, trans, the main guy. Trans uh, versus, that's our buddy, Donnie O'Malley. He was an officer in the Marine Corps Infantry. God damn. It looks like Wolverine coming out of the Weapon X facility. Yeah, so yeah. The, the plot is uh, that Nazi zombies, obviously. Yep. Put that on the screen, why Bob. Not. There you go. Nazi zombies and... Anne Frank realizes she needs to transition to a man to be able to fight them. That's the only way she can win. And so the tagline is, I'm done hiding. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Obviously. Um, but we were hours away from there's that a, actually there, being a, a real movie. There's a 12-minute scene in the script of her getting, getting a penis her, sewn uh, on. Dick sewn on. Yes. And so the, the wow. sign, yeah, yeah, they bring in a doctor from Germany, and he's just like, look, I, we've got to stop the Nazis, and I'm here to help. Mm. But we've got to sew on I mean, it's, penis this is first. basically Captain America, but instead of... Him giving some serum to some dude, he fucking sews a dick on yeah. a little girl. You're giving semen to and, and there was a brother, yeah. so our buddy Jared was going to play the brother, yeah. and it was Frank Frank. And uh, He went and stopped eating potato chips yes. and shit. So all he was doing was eating attic. potato chips, and they're like, dude, you're you so stop. fucking loud. Stop. And but it's like, like, it's like a family cares? guy bit where he slowly opens the book. I know. Of the <laughs> and yeah. And then it's like, <laughs> Yeah. I love all, it's, I actually, so I wrote, you know the new Nicolas Cage movie that's premiering yeah. here tonight? Yeah. So I my, is he in town? Yeah, I heard he, he is. Was. Yeah, and here's how I know he's in town. Somebody's been printing out flyers saying Nicholas Cage, I'm in love with you. Please call me and putting them all over Austin. And it's a Shut real, the fuck it's a up. real fucking phone number on there. And I'm here, and my number is one nine hundred the gambler. <laughs> <laughs> um, what about wait? Are you guys going to that tonight? No, no, we're not I'm, going. I'm trying to get in. So this is the truth. I swear. Where to you, is it? Uh, it's at one the, of the Alamos. Uh, the, 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 yeah, no, it's at the. Um, Wait, where is it? I'm com I don't know now. Probably. What's the name of the movie? Do you know the name it, of the movie? It's like the, the unbearable weight of like un of something talent. I can't remember. But I wrote this movie. Unbearable, not, not, the not unbearable this weight movie. of massive talent. Massive talent. So I wrote a movie that was that was similar to this one. Uh -huh. And in the movie, I play the Nicolas Cage part. And in one of the roles that I play is Anne Frank. No For I swear way. to you, I swear it's true. 
I, I knew we were friends for a reason. Exactly. It's, that's 100%. And, it's I, all, and Frank is the fucking linchpin to this whole fucking to, organization. To our, yeah, to the world. <laughs> to, our, to the world. Jody uh, High Roller over there. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we've got the, the real Anne Frank here of tattoo artists. Is that weird to say? <laughs> to be the Anne Frank of something. A tattoo artist? That means you're the best, dude. You're the best in the biz. Uh, Will XX, thank you for doing the tattoo. Absolutely. Come in front of, uh, get, we, we've got it in a wide here, so come in front of the wide. Black Salt, uh, Black Salt still Lopez. the name of your yes. company, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It doesn't ex it's in theory at the moment, mm. but it exists. Look at that. I don't know if people are going to be Hillary able to focus on what's going tattoo. on. Yeah, dude, your, your, your back looks like a magic eye puzzle. <laughs> Keep it stationary. There it is. Yeah. Look at that. It's like thing. that scene in fucking Mallrats where Ethan Suppley's trying to find dude, the sailboat. It's 100%. It's a schooner. That was amazing. Will, how did you do that that fast? Yeah, the I'm, speed I'm is just crazy. used to working under bullshit pressure like that. <laughs> My, uh, when I first started tattooing, it was a get them in, get them out shop. Sure. Mm. So I just never been able to shake that for some reason, and, and it's okay. Um, I just. I tattoo like there's a gun to my head for some reason. Like a I'm, tattoo just, gun to your... Like, I want to get it, it done. I need I'm to sure done. eating, <laughs> like, learning to eat in the military helped that too, right? Uh, yeah, that, that too. Basically, like, yeah. when I'm working, I don't really... I'm not too hungry. I just mm. need to get the mission done. Just, well, you, the mission was accomplished, and it, my God, sir, that in, is amazing. In record time. Can I... Wait, can I ask you... Have you guys heard about the made-to-fade tattoos? It... I think the the ink has a little bit of metal in it, which gives it, it's susceptible to the lasering. Yeah. So yeah. like, because I is it? Are, I know that they're in LA because I have a joke about them. Yeah. But I'm wondering, are they? Are there any of the shops here like that type of? Yeah. I yet? personally won't use that stuff. Okay, got it. I mean, putting metal into somebody's body is probably not a great idea. Yeah. yeah it's also, fine. it's it's a fucking tattoo, man. Yeah. Like, it's not a temper. It's not a yeah. sticker. It's just a fucking tattoo. Yeah, go, get a henna, go get a henna tattoo yeah, so if you want. I don't use a lot of pain numbing stuff. I don't. Mm. You, it's a tattoo. It yeah. hurts and it stays forever. So yeah, let's for sure. just stick with that. Yeah, I don't know why it is, but I said it's like, uh, well, anyway, I have, a, I have a whole joke about it, but I'm wondering if it's going to get more popular because they start writing up about them. I think so. Like those, those right now, those stick on to stay on for like two, three weeks are getting real big. People like temporary. I know. Right, well, that is. It's like it's fast fashion. It's all that yeah, stuff. It They're like, I'm yeah. like this tomorrow. Yeah. It, it'll probably come around. But the, like the glow in the dark stuff, the white. Tattoo stuff, all that came and went. It's, it's yeah, all yeah. trendy fad. For I, sure. I have three pairs of the same jeans. Really? Like the literally the exact same jeans. I think you're the I only wear. one, because I, I, I do the same thing. Yeah. Where I'm like, cool, if, if it fits and it's comfortable, Bro. I'll buy three of them and then move on. Yeah. I will buy out. I remember when, when I was in Korea, not the war. I went to. Uh, I went. Nobody to, questioned the war, by the no, way. No, that he was looked a, for a second, yeah. seventy years ago. Not, listen, Jody High Roller. <laughs> he's our. He's our fucking historian. You can I, tell. Bro, from I the can outfit. tell. He's, yeah, brother. He looks like. He's like. Wait a minute. He looks like. He was like. Huh. <laughs> Fuck you, say about Korea, bitch. <laughs> so I went there, and I and they and an H and M there. They had these amazing shirts that yeah. I had tried to get in the states, but I'd only been able to get two of them because every time I, I would I would literally wear the shirt into H and M to be like, I'm looking for more of this. Yeah. And they're like, dude, we don't. We, those are sold out. Those are sold out. So I went to Korea, not the war, and they. Uh, I literally grab. I go, do you have any of this? And they go, yeah, we have this, this, and this. I go, I'll take them all. Mm. <laughs> I was like, wrap them up. How and many then, were there? Mm. There were, there were. There were two white. I feel like I'm doing a joke. Two yeah. whites, two blacks, and they walked uh, into a bar. Two I Asian. No, no, and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, there was probably like six or seven. But he goes, "This is the most." We, I go, "You guys didn't get any more?" Because I go, "I'm staying down the road. When is your shipment?" And I was in Korea for a few weeks, and they're like, "No, we'll never get these again." He goes, "These shirts sold out so fucking fast. They just fit well." For a yeah. guy's broad-shouldered, thin guy, you know? Mm. Like these pants, by the way, these are Banana mm. Republic. I've had these for 20 oh, years. Oh, those are nice. Banana Republic. You said 20 years? 20, 20 years, years yeah. Wow. Dude, yeah. I never got rid of them. These are the fuck. I love these pants. Nice. They're a nice fit. Yeah, you've done a good, good job of maintaining those as well. Yeah, really nice out. job. We're proud of you. Yeah. Shout, shout out, out to the Banana Republic. It's the Republic. only it's Banana Republic, Republic <laughs> that's, that's aged well. It's yeah. like the actual political movement. It's exactly. Gap, it's Gap Inc., you know. Is yeah, it really? It's Banana Republic, Gap and Old then Navy. Old Navy. Yeah, and then congratulations. But they're all made. Kanye West they're all made gap. in the same factory. Same factory. It's these yeah. exact same clothes. Just they just charge more for some. Ah, it's, it's the yeah. class. The class. Yeah, it's the class. Yeah. But also the sizing. I don't know if you guys wear Old Navy. I, I I've never been uh, able to wear it. It's like the, not their board shorts. The, the Old Navy board shorts. Well, the sizes though. Like, have you seen the sizing on it? <laughs> mm. There's like a hula hoop that's a size zero. Oh I'm really? Like, I'm like, is this in hippo? What are we doing here? Well, yeah. I think that, that probably means that in America... No, yeah, of uh, course. Poverty equals fat. Sure. And if, you're not, if you don't believe that, go to San Antonio. Yeah. Which is this... It's the sixth largest city in the country, Oof. and it's the third fattest by 
population percentage, which means there are more fat people in San wow. Antonio than anywhere on earth, probably. Mm. Yeah. I've never because been other to San countries Antonio. don't have this problem. Mm. You're good. You don't you don't see people in fucking yep. Africa like four hundred pounds. It's a one stop shop where you go there one day and you're for you're the Alamo. Go. Yeah, and you see it and you're like, oh, that's it. And that's as you're driving small. away, you go, you remember the Alamo? I go, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, you're like, that's fine. <laughs> and you I'll... wouldn't even if you drove around that part of the city, you wouldn't notice the Alamo except for this big statue they built out front. Really? Like the actual Alamo is about the size of this building. It's about the size of this building, yeah. It's, sh- it's shockingly small. Yeah. Uh, Will, where's your shop located at? Tell everybody. Right now, um, I have a, a temporary shop in Salt Lake City. I have another like home shop here. I also travel and tattoo. I don't have a physical shop that I'm working on. It kind of fell through, but I, I'm just existing at the moment. Okay. <laughs> well, dude, uh, Try, your work estate. is amazing. You're always booked. Uh, we greatly appreciate you, you being absolutely, here today. Absolutely. Uh, stick around, have some barbecue. Yeah, I'm hang, really looking forward uh, to dude, that. Have some hard AF seltzers. Gracias. Drink up. We're going to bring some other people in. We'll bring in Lastro Lopez. Come on in, Woo. my man. Uh, we'll swap out there. You got the we're tattoo. Sw- you did the out, tattoo. We're swapping out la- uh, Latinos in here. Did you? I, I like how you grabbed another eight percent. I love how you, you go. Only one Latino at the end of the time. Guys. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've, we've got, got, got a, a limit. We, <laughs> we've already got a Jew up here, and I'm like half. Half Jewish, according to my fucking, according to your bullshit rules. Yeah, yeah. Like my mom is, her mom was Jewish, which means I've, I've been captured. Oh, I thought you were like, I was like, I'm only half because my mom was a Nazi. <laughs> well, and, uh, I think made, right now we have like two and a half Mexicans in here. Two and a half. Yeah, almost. That's true, I yeah. think so. That's two and a half too many. Yeah. Um, Sean Matson from Strike Force. You can bet they came in the same car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys. Strike Force and uh, and uh, obviously. Uh, his other company, who was Cardamax, Cardamax was yeah. a big sponsor on the show. He's, Sean Matson has been one of our, our buddies and, and uh, homies for years uh, from Cardamax. He says uh, he just got his seltzers in the mail. These are delicious, man. Definitely not weak. Yeah. People don't understand what the 8% is until about an hour later. No, well, like, oh, shit. Caleb Francis figured it out last night. So we were over at this Ibble event. Yep. Uh, and Tim Montana played. Mm-hmm. Then... Matt, Jared, and Tim played in a band apparently called One Horseshoe, mm-hmm. um, which is the best band in the world. Uh, were they good? That, that's what they say. It's the, the, <laughs> like, you can, you can just call yourself Antifa and say you're anti-fascist and force people to believe that. So you can just call yourself the best band in the world, and people are forced to believe that, like Tenacious D with the greatest song in the world, right? Yeah. 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 So, and then uh, Danny played some of his solo stuff afterwards. But Caleb... Blacked out in a parking garage, it's, right? I don't know exactly what happened, but I got a text at 2 a.m. from Jared. I didn't see it until morning, but he was like, hey, where did you leave Caleb? I'm like, I didn't, I didn't see him. I, mm-hmm. I was drunk, and I got an Uber home. Apparently, he slept in a fucking parking garage somewhere, which is probably not the first time that's happened. That's this, a good review, though. It was cold last night. Oh, dude. It was really cold Yeah, but he's, a, he's, he's a, a big, big man. Big man. He, he's, I couldn't get an Uber ask. from downtown. I had to walk back to my hotel. In a car or just in I, the That garage. part I don't know. He slept in a tauntaun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> probably, probably in the back of a Tacoma. He cut open a homeless dude and crawled yeah. inside him. How many times have you slept in the back of a Tacoma? It seems like a lot. Oh, oh, in the back of a Tacoma? No, yeah. he's an American-made guy. No, more of like a, like a Ford Ranger type. Mm. <laughs> I have something a lot of the backs of those. El Caminos. Yo, El Caminos. Like yeah. Isn't the El Camino I, the mullet of cars? Business in the front, party in the back. Yeah. I feel oh, like yeah. it is, That's right? all it's all about. Yeah. yeah. How, how do you like the tattoo, by the way? Oh, the tattoo was phenomenal. It turned out amazing. The, the work was phenomenal, and my, it, it didn't hurt at all. He's got a no. really light hand. It wasn't digging in. It wasn't painful. It was actually fucking phenomenal. He's great. Uh, he's done some of mine. He's, he's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, are he's, you, a cool, he's a cool guy too. He's fun to talk to. Before we went on air, we were just talking the whole time, and it, it's fucking. It was great. Were you yeah, guys speaking awesome. Spanish at all? Or? I don't speak any Spanish. Oh, the only true, Spanish yeah. I know is how to say pencil sharpener, and that's saca puntas. <laughs> and it's just because it sounds funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like I went there. That's one of the islands, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You guys been to saca puntas? <laughs> right next to Tulum. <laughs> you love it. I love it. Bro. People yeah. are just the getting club sh- made on saca puntas. Uh, it's one of the best. People are just getting shot on the beach now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're just driving Suck up on, like on, no, on fucking it's jet skis. Jet skis. <laughs> These two dudes drove up on jet skis yeah, and dude. did a drive-by on fucking jet skis, which sounds horrible, but it's actually pretty funny it's, to me. I went to a, a resort, th- this five-diamond resort that's near Tulum in mm. Playa Carmen. It's called um, Ishkarat. It's spelled like X-C-A-R-A-T or whatever. And we went there for my buddy's one-year anniversary for his wedding that I couldn't make last year because I was filming the show. Mm-hmm. So we went, or in 2020, so in 2021, we went back. A lot of the wedding party went. It was so fucking fun. 
beautiful, like five diamond resort, Michelin restaurant in, in the hotel, like Shit. really incredible, right? At top shelf. I mean, everything was like what you imagine something is. So someone, I hadn't seen some buddies in a while. And they're like, oh, did you hear about the, 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 um, the gunman? At the at yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was there. So, like, this woman is filming it on TikTok, and this dude is just running around with a gun. There was just a gunman loose in the fucking resort. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not uh, when we were there, but. No, but it, that's happening a lot. And yeah. It's, it scared some people off of spring break, obviously. Not this guy. Not this spring breaker. So, I got guns on my shirt. I ain't scared of yeah, no one else with guns. You're you know? good to go. You're good I got to go. juicies and MP7s on this thing. You know? I wish that was made out of bulletproof material. I'm a bulletproof man myself. I believe it. Mm. What does so, your chest say? What does your chest say? Oh, it's just two butt pirate swords. Is it really? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, butt pirate swords. What's a butt pirate sword? It's, it's a gay pirate. It's just a gay what, pirate. What's, yeah. what's, I wish there was a tramp stamp, though, over your... I'm a gay pirate? Yeah, just like a butt pirate. What's thing. the gay never part too of late. it, though? Just butt, butt stuff, here? like butt stuff, like doing butt <laughs> stuff, butt pirates. I, I, can't, I don't understand, though. Why? why? They're just swords. They, and you use swords, there, but there's no there's no intrinsic game. Well, it's got a lock. Well, no, so no, it's got a lock on the on the end of it, so it locks in your asshole and then pulls it out. It rips it out. Well, that see, that's not gay. That's well, I got this. Uh, I got torture. this when I was yeah. in Korea, and they're like, "Hey, you can't get tattoos." I'm Wait, like, I'm the gonna war get a or the tattoo. Um, yeah, with the war. Come okay. on, dude. Both. See, I told you, he knew. There yeah. it is. Yeah, he knew. knew. He knew. If you don't know who Lasro Lopez is, were you in the Second Infantry Division or something? Yeah. If you don't know who Lasro Lopez is, we sent him to the last row of every college football game in America. Uh, and then he gets to enjoy it. If you find him, he'll buy you a beer. Now you'll have uh, something easily identifiable other than the mullet. Other than the glasses, the mullet, and the mustache. The uh, personality. The crop tops, everything. The butt pack. pirate swords. Yep. Yeah. The fanny pack, yeah. Well, right. now you can really find me. That's the thing. People can really see me now. <laughs> You're like the opposite of Where's Waldo. You're like, there's Lopez. <laughs> oh, it's a dude. very easy book. <laughs> can we make a coffee table book is called phone, There's is Lopez? Is your phone on you? No, it's a... Uh, uh, over on the desk over oh, there. Oh, sure. grab the phone real quick. Okay. So somebody made him a phone cover um, out of himself. And oh, I love it that. It is the greatest thing I've ever seen. And when I walked in the studio today, he had it. Um, is there a camera set up over there that we can get, zoom in on this? Uh, or on mine? Let's just go over to that camera. Yeah. Go over to that camera and then hold it up in, into that camera real quick. Because this is one of the greatest phone covers of all time. Who made this for you, by the way? Look at that. That screening is at Paramount Theater, by the way. Yes. So. 10.30? Yeah. Um, let me see. Ah, uh, focus. Yeah. Focus. Focus. There it is. Wow. Look oh, at yeah. that phone cover. By the That's way. good. Is I that, like the way that, you look, but why, why do they have your gut out like that? That's his gut. That's his, that's no, his it power is, gut. It's a wealth belly. It's a wealth belly. Yeah. Okay. When you're that rich... It's called a wealth belly. Oh sure, I just. Uh, it's very side. You know, uh, what, what, yeah, what, G- Gangnam what, Style. Yeah, it's a wealth belly from Korea, obviously, before the war. Not the war, the no. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was born before the war. He was, the war that he fought was on the charts. The war happened, and in he that won. He place, won, though. That's why it's called the Korean War. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He won that yeah. war. Yeah, he won that war. But uh, if you find Lasro Lopez, obviously take a picture with him, and then take a picture of the tattoo with him. So this fall, because you'll be out in college stadiums everywhere. Oh yeah. Um, You'll be in the last row of every event. Uh, I know the first couple games. Um, I know game number two, Texas is actually playing Alabama at home. That is a massive, wow. massive game. Yeah, Maybe I can find that girl, Sarah, too. And it's week two. So Sarah. He, met a, he met a love connection at one of these games. And, and, and he hasn't uh, been able to find her ever since. Yeah, the misconnections part of uh, the internet doesn't really work anymore. Nobody does that anymore. So. Or she's just terrified of me. I can't tell. Well, how did it go when you guys were in person? Oh, it was fucking great. We were, I was going to get her number, but you pulled me away for the photo. You're like, Lastro, get over here. Take a photo. I'm like, fuck. Well, I was like, hey, I'll be my right back. were with Yeah, me. yeah, yeah. I, I knew why, but. Because the weird thing dude, is. it was so good. I showed her the whole thing, drinking bro, drinking bro at. She's like, oh, I fucking love this. And you're like, hey, get over here. I'm like, fuck. Wait, <laughs> so, her name is Sarah? Sorry, I yeah. fucked it up. Yeah. If, do we know her last name? Because oh, we'll shout no, her out on the show. No, guys. Just, all I know is Sarah from UT. I, I'd imagine she goes there. But. Do you have a picture of her or anything? Sarah yeah, there's a picture of like, us and like nine other chicks, and I've circled her, and I've got to post it more. But, Do you yeah. want to, can you give it a Sam Elliott? It was Sarah. <laughs> this is your old pal, Sam Elliott. My buddy here, Lopez, <laughs> he's thirsty for you. The way that I'm thirsty for a Coors. <laughs> he loved to tap those Rockies whenever you're going to let him. <laughs> Don't let this be a misconnection out on the range. Find this little doggie. And do it, doggy style. <laughs> if that don't work, I don't know what will. <laughs> I hope it happens for you, dude. You got to keep me updated, man. You've oh, got yeah. a house now. 
I do have a house. Yeah, yeah dude. Well, it's so not like he can... was sleeping in a fucking refrigerator <laughs> box before that. No, but he's got a real house. <laughs> pretty and he much has barbecues. Was. Yeah, he pretty much was. <laughs> he's got he's got people over for barbecues and shit. It's a real place, and I think a, a real lady could come in and help you out. How old are you in real life? Uh, who knows, man. <laughs> At the Super Bowl party, everyone was asking me that, and I'm like, I'm not going to fucking tell you. No one knows. No one, knows. literally, us. no one knows. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, Ross doesn't even know how old I am. I have no idea. No one's going to. I don't need so to. So this this person of the show who's a fan, I'm like, I'm not going to tell you, dude. No. Mm. All I know is this. I think gotta, I think it's fucking hilarious. You got to cut, him, cut him in half and count the rings. Well, really it, but here's the other tell. thing: is the first check I wrote him, I go, Hey, <laughs> I'm going to write you this check, and you go, No, no, no. I, I need you to make that out to another name. And I was like, Wait, what? Do I not know your fucking name? And you were like. Eh, it's not my real name. I gotta. I go my real this. name is Paul Blart. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I knew you were special because I was like, "Are you on the run?" I think I asked you yeah, if you were yeah, on the run, yeah. time, and I didn't care. I wasn't gonna rush you. I was like, "All right, great. If you're on the run, you're on the run." Well, that's why I have this mullet to begin with, so people don't know who I am. Back when I was doing crime. <laughs> Well, see, you've, you've taken on a look of someone that does crime, though. Yeah. Perfect uh, cover right I there. Guess. Yeah. Hide, hide in plain sight. I mean, everyone, you guys were talking about Coke earlier. Everyone at these games offers me Coke. It's terrifying. I'm like, no shit. I'm like, fuck Well, no, hold on. I can't that's do it. two things. I think you look like a villain from Grand Theft Auto, but I'll also that. that's, that's a that's a good thing that you got offered Coke because I look like the guy at a bar who can supply it. Yes. Mm. So when I go to clubs, I will have people come up to me that I think that they're like hitting on me or whatever. At least they're they're trying to offer you drugs, but it's like <laughs> they think it's also you have the coke. One hundred percent. That's do. also because you drink like fifteen cups of coffee a day. That's true, right? And so I, they probably think you're on coke. And at the I'm time. I got high cheekbones. I'm a slim man. Yeah, yeah. you are I'm a slim reaper. You are. Yeah. You probably worn the same size since ninth grade. You know, funny enough, on my first driver's license, I was because I'm six three and I was one fifty in high school. Holy shit! And now I'm one seventy two. Okay. Yeah. So you're right there. Right there. For you're an right adult there. male, mm. it's not bad. It's not mostly bad. cock. It's that bad. other 20 pounds is mostly cock. By the way, am I name of my cock? <laughs> Greg Oden. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it's, a, it's a graduate of the Ohio State University. The, <laughs> the Ohio State and, University. And on the front of it, it's is tattooed as a Buckeye. <laughs> <laughs> so we've actually like got some over there. Yeah, and we've also got a guy you. who's uh, 173 in the studio. Mike Eaton, come on in, dude. Come on in and join us. Uh, Mike we'll, Eaton? We'll swap out. Come on in, Mike. Oh, I didn't know you were here, Michael. Yeah, I just Michael's did his here. Podcast. Yeah, oh, he's shit. just here yeah. doing Giggle Boys. Doing Giggle Boys podcast. Yeah, we had there's a blast, a, there's man. There's a ton of people in the building here oh, today. Oh, we had so much fun. Mike's one of our faves, dude. Uh, I know it. And he's, he's also he's also like extremely, 173. extremely not gay. Yeah. One, yeah. And 173. Like, I don't know, I don't I'm know. also an impressionist. This is my impression of a straight guy. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey it's me, Mike. It's my life. <laughs> the the name of your comedy album is 173 and straight. Those are the only two jokes. I have a wife. It's pretty cool. Exactly. Are you doing shows tonight? I'm Stand doing up. one tomorrow at Parker Jazz Club. Okay. This airs ja- after wait, that, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, it's uh, fine. either way, Jazz um, Club. You had Jonathan on as a, as a guest on Giggle Boys podcast yes. today. Yeah. Fucking amazing. We love your show. It's one of our favorites on the network. It's so much fun to do. It's so great to be able to just go somewhere and drink and then mm. talk about things. And then endless booze. <laughs> like, yeah. There's free booze. I know. Where it's it's like, awesome. Hey. These are pretty dangerous. I know. It's These crazy, are going right? to be the end of me. Yeah, at the end of a lot of people. Dude, that should be the ad. <laughs> people go like this, like, this will be the end of me. Can we talk about how the lemon lime tastes just like Fruit Loops? It's, it's really good. So I, I'm not a big lemon lime guy. They said we had to have it in our portfolio. Uh-huh. But then I love this one. I don't, I don't know how they made it that it, good. It's the, the way we made it. They gave us options. We could use uh, like a hard alcohol base or we could use malt. Mo- yeah. Every other seltzer that you drink is made out of malt, mm-hmm. which, which is gross. Did it, it, it has that it weird like aftertaste. Mickey's. Mm, yeah. Poverty. Yeah. It has my that, favorite. It has, yeah. so it, it that four, tastes as food stamps. At 4%, yeah. like a normal White Claw, you don't really notice it. Yeah. But when you go to no. 8%, it yeah. tastes like, fu- like Bud Light Platinum and White Claw Surge or whatever the fuck it is. Tastes Ugh. like shit. Yeah, but Mickey's. Yeah, dude. It's that malted, yeah, that malted it's beverage. Gross. It's gross. It's disgusting. So we went, with an other, we went with a normal base for it and just added more of like flavoring, yeah, and citric acid, and it seems to have worked out. To be honest, and I think yeah, it it's so a real bad. power here's the, bottom. Here's the real dangerous about this. <laughs> yeah, you have the power bottom it opens from here, so you can slam it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did you just tongue that AF. I go, I did. I did. So the craziest thing about this is that the, uh, the one thing I don't like about this is this would mix incredibly well with other booze. Yeah. <laughs> like if, if you that no no because I'm telling you You'd the mall the floor dude. dude I've been doing that with yeah. white claw for years though. Like yeah, pouring but, vodka into white claw. But it sucks because yeah. the white claw sucks. Yeah. But this it tastes like booze. 
Yeah. So it, 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 but it tastes like like a Sprite or something. Like yeah. it, it tastes like you've already <laughs> mixed it. So you just you fucking clear one of these. You put the vodka in there, bro. I go. This is dangerous. You'll hit the floor. That's bro. how we kept the sugar. The dance low, floor. <laughs> yeah, the sugar's very low. So mo- most of these. My doctor told me these are healthy. If no you, sugars, no carbs. Yeah, he's like, if you drink enough of these, diabetes. you'll get your foot back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, is Eli your doctor? Because he's not a real doctor. It's <laughs> <laughs> fine. Did I've I been t- seeing Doctor Fauci. I don't know. He seems oh, good. He's disappeared. He's disappeared. Bro, now. That guy COVID's witness over. protection. Dude, that was, we were doing it over the- Zoom. I don't know. <laughs> he said he was at Little St. James doing appointments. I don't know. I made a joke about that where I was like, I go, where the hell is that Keebler elf? He's like the guy that orders a lot of sashimi for the table, but then when the check comes, that dude is He's nowhere bathroom, to be seen. Yeah. We all said, know oh, that guy. Will somebody get him out of the bathroom to throw yeah. a card down? Seriously, where the fuck is he? He, right know. now, he's getting his master's in pediatric gynecology. So. <laughs> With Greg Oden at <laughs> Ohio State. That just registered children and vaginas. And yeah. I was like, God damn it. I'm surprised you guys haven't dropped the N-word on the show. There was bets on that. Oh, I know. Who on the network would, would drop it first? And I was like, dude, my money's on Giggle Boys. We definitely had a black guy on to say it. Did you really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Did you make him say it on the show? Do you show? know how hard it was? We spent, uh, this is how white Austin is. For our first live episode, we had a sign language translator. <laughs> and we spent an what? hour trying to find a black friend to come say the N-word so we could see her do it in sign language. Shut up. And Wait, we, did, you get we just canceled? found a really bold white guy. Do you get <laughs> Really? <laughs> <laughs> Is it on video? That part's not. <laughs> there is something really funny about that where it goes, dude, I won't even sign the N-word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, she had to sign like Bukaki. She just goes N and that's it. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. funniest thing in the world was watching her try to improvise signing Bukaki. And then Eli was like, oh, yeah? Retarded Bukaki. <laughs> And what did she do? No it way. Was, wow. Dude, it was awesome. That's fucking it's amazing. It's incredible. That's amazing. Yeah, like and she that. can hear, so she didn't, she's just a good person. Oh, she's well, a great person. Probably the opposite of that. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that's fine. She none, knows of us, that's, none of us are good people. No, none yeah. of us at all. Seriously, if Eli shows up with someone, the presumption is not that they're a good person. <laughs> yeah, okay, the fair. presumption is that they're probably on the run. Yeah. We had to hide the, the bottle of Pappy Van Winkle that, that a, a listener sent in. Because we yeah. were worried Eli was just going to grab it and be like, oh, who cares? He's been sober for a while, it. right? No. 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 no, that fell out. I ran into him last night, Hammered. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With my car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Eli does sober for a little while, and then he goes way the other way. So he'll text me at like 4 in the morning like, hey, man, I don't think crack is that bad. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> he's one of those guys. He's one of those guys. He's a sun's up sober. Yeah, yeah, he's he's good. As long as it's Dude, the night down, we met right, in Austin, he was good, visiting. Brother, brother. And at seven AM he was like, Hey, what time do bars open? <laughs> oh like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he's ready to go again. Yeah. Uh, the reason I wanted to pull you up, so you have a crazy tattoo as well. Oh, so many. Dude. Which one do you want to get into? Yeah, t- tell is the it... audience because you know, obviously we got the, the live Hillary Clinton tattoo here. Um, what was the one on your... So my hand is pretty bad. So I was on a bunch of Xanax in Portland. Mm -hmm. It was my first comedy festival I got accepted to. So I went celebrating the first night after the after party. And I woke up the next morning with a snake on my hand. And it says, I've made him a snake. Shut the fuck (laughs) up. Oh my God, dude. Uh, What was the one on your elbow, on the inner arm? Uh, So that one's Hunter S. Thompson. Mm, I actually woke up about two hours into this one. And the guy was like, man, you really pepped up. I was like, oh, I've been here a while, huh? Whoa. You were blacked out? Yeah. Let me see it. What's the, uh, what uh, does it say? Buy the ticket, take the ride. Mm, How fitting, right? I actually like that tattoo. Let me, can I see it? Yeah. What's the one on the crease of your arm? What's oh, one? this one is great. So this is Gary. This was the original producer of Giggle Boys. Uh, is I lost he a, dead? No. No, he's not. <laughs> Gary Fowles? That was what I was saying about Last Rose, that he, he got a good portrait tattoo because I got this piece of shit. Show Jonathan that. Look at this thing. Look at this guy. That doesn't look like any person. No. That's how who I It, I look, it looks like somebody are. would have been like on a fucking TV show in the 1950s. Dude, do you know, yeah. do you know the worst tattoo I, I ever got? No. So I had this thing during the pandemic where I wanted to do like extravagant crimes because mm-hmm. the police were all gone. Yeah, so yeah. I decided I was going to smoke weed on an airplane. I was, okay. I was like, yeah, I bet I can pull that off. So I bought an electric bong. I went in the bathroom. I hit it. I mm-hmm. took a video. The cops call that evidence, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I went and I was doing a bunch of Xanax. I blacked out. And I remember getting to Austin as I, like getting to the rental car counter yeah. as I blacked out and thinking like, get full coverage, you know, cause I'm not an idiot. If sure. you wreck it, they bring you a new car for $20. <laughs> you know? So I wake up the next morning, I had an ass tattoo. So my entire right ass cheek is now a tattoo and it didn't make any sense. It's like, what the fuck is that? So how, I, how big is it? I feel like a lot of these stories start with Xanax. Yeah. Oh my gosh. A, yeah. And it says avocado on yeah. it. 
Whoa. Oh, it, there's, boy. There's no telling why it's there or how it I got there. It it's because you get high on Xanax and like stupid puns. I know, dude. It's not I'm a like, fucking mystery. I, I we're not trying to a five year old. Yeah. yeah. We're not like, trying to discover what happened at the beginning of the universe. You're a retard that likes Xanax <laughs> and puns. Ask this is the fastest dude. mystery ever solved. Yeah. 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 By the way, I thought you were going to have pull it down. It was going to be the map to dry land from Waterworld. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, I have an Autobot symbol on the top of my back, though. <laughs> I love that. Autobots? Yeah, yeah roll out, dude. <laughs> dude. Is that what it says, roll out? Yeah, dude, I'm the OG trans. Mm, Transformers, shut dude. The fuck we rule. Up, dude. Oh, dude, he, he knew. He yeah, was just yeah. like, yo, I know. Well, I used to do a joke about the shake weight. Where I was saying about, and then I was like, do you guys remember? And I would do the commercial. And I go, where you turn, everyone discovered that commercial at the same time. It was 2 a.m. on a Tuesday morning when you couldn't fall asleep. So you thought, I'll turn on the TV. And Comedy you saw, Central. You saw a white woman getting a, just jerking off a transformer. Yep. And it was this, and it, and it would be like, Autobots, yeah. climax and roll out. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, boop. I go, that last part was him coming. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it would sound like, for sure. Yeah. Dude, I, beep, I beep, thank beep, Comedy beep. Central for my sexual awakening, because they played Girls Gone Wild trailers. Mm. Girls Gone Wild trailers. That dude's um, in jail, right? Uh, or he got raped in jail, at least. No, I, Whatever, thank you for your service. Kidnapped. You know? <laughs> I think he, I heard he was kidnapped and raped by one of the, the girls who was on the film. And, Whoa. The, and, the, and the father had She him. went really wild. No, 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 not her, the father. Oh. And the father oh, had him tracked down, shit. and then they were fucking him in the ass for like three days straight. Holy Duck shit. His name was in Joe. His own place, everything else. Yeah. Joe Francis. Yeah. yeah. I have said for a long wow. time that... Uh, Raping a dude is a good way to get back at people for things. So yeah, for sure. Like if if you insult me, or whatever, wrong me in whatever way, and I'm it, we're, let's say we're fucking like teenagers, mm -hmm, and I'm yeah. like I, I go fuck your mom. That yeah. sucks, dude. Right. Yeah. But if I go fuck your dad, your Wee. life is over. Can you I know? ask you something, Dad? Yeah, dude. Have I ever wronged you? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. No. <laughs> we but I we uh, with a live feed. I I need to establish that. No. Is no. Your dad's yeah. still alive. Yes. Yeah, he can He's a handsome then. man. I promise you, I'm not going to. I am not. Dad, I am not but he going can be to. Fucked. I he's a fighter. I'm not going to rape your dad. I yeah, but he's Thank got a beard. You, you can hold on to that. Yeah. But seriously, if you fuck some some dude who's talking shit to you and you fuck his straight dad, yeah, his Ooh. life's over. Yeah. Dominance. Yeah, dude, Dominance. his it's You're over his dad now. unless he's Catholic. Exactly. Well, then they're all fucked. Yeah. It's then he's like, like, "Oh my God, did my son wrong you?" Yeah. Whoopsie. <laughs> whoopsie. Whoopsie. It's not a second you give wine to second graders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's like four pedophile jokes on this show. Man, well, Bob is jealous started... that he didn't get fucked in in church. So, dude, yeah. same. Yeah. Do you know how annoying that was going to Catholic school and seeing all my friends get picked? <laughs> Oh, I'm too fat for you, Father Andrew. Thanks, you piece of shit. I figured that would have, have come. Tits. In, that would have come in handy because of the tits. That's, that's as the a problem, kid, right? Mike. Yeah. That's the I thought I was the best of both worlds, like a trans woman. Bob, what was like yours? I got tits and a penis, you can diddle. What was your problem? You think? Did you ever analyze it? I think I just wanted it too much. Yeah. <laughs> Wanting to be book is not book. No, they can smell the desperation. Yeah. Now. <laughs> hey, Nick, throw me one of those. Yeah, let's throw some more of these hard ass seltzers so out there. So literal. Go to hardafseltzer.com, by the way. It ships right to your house, Ooh. 42 states. Oh, my good golly it gosh. Is, you it, need is, to. it is out. Everybody's open. Guaranteed to the give country. you head. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. Yeah! Dude, welcome. And the first alcohol to guarantee no whiskey dick. You'll no. be hard AF. Yeah, do you guys fuck, no. on, this? Do you guys fuck on this after the show? Yeah, you the absolutely. Show. Yeah. It, yeah. work, it works. Like, you're I, good. They, I will say, it is also hard AF to pull out when you've been drinking these. It's, well, well, look. Do you care? Just, Sometimes. No, abortion, <laughs> abortion's still kind of legal here. You're fine. No, but... Like, in yeah. this safe house? Yeah. You know, <laughs> just in here in the studio. <laughs> yeah. We've yeah, got that's a large where flight of clothing stairs. Rack. Yeah. There's just a clothing rack with no shirts. Yeah. It's all hangers, yeah. and then there's a huge flight of yeah. stairs. Your choice. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. not just Take a tattoo it. artist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at the table. Look yeah, at that right? Thing. Yeah, those are stirrups. Why would he need that for a tattoo? That looks oh. comfortable. <laughs> yeah, because you know the other thing we were trying to do is get Eli and his co-host in to do a live VSEC on air, uh, vasectomy. Because he shouldn't have kids, right? At all. I mean, I don't, sure. I don't think he I should. I think you're probably I, right. I think a lot of, like, I'm a pretty, uh, I'm not libertarian on the economic side because that's retarded, but yeah. liberty in general, like, let people do what they want to do, but I feel like most of his liberties and rights should be taken away. <laughs> Honestly, it's just too dangerous. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's he's like got a record. It's, but if you made him a ward of the state, imagine what kind of peril it'd be really that funny. Would cause. It'd be yeah. really funny. I mean, just record the whole thing and put it on, and that'll pay for his treatment. Oh man, we got to get him a GoPro and get him committed. Let's set him up <laughs> and get him fifty-one fifty. We could do it. <laughs> it wouldn't be, be that hard to get people easy. to believe Eli's crazy. 
Oh, like really? It wouldn't? Yeah. No, no, dude. We can, I can definitely. Like, we have hours of podcast as evidence. Yeah. Yeah. And then, Are you and kidding me? The other thing about it, has he talked about the abortions on the show? <laughs> yeah. Oh, he has. He wants to keep them so that he can get a Netflix special. He's like, I think Hillary Clinton's doing it. So Wait, Mike, Mike, if I just Mike. get these Tinder dates pregnant, I can hold on to one. <laughs> Specify that he wants to keep the fetus. The fetus. Yeah, sorry. He doesn't want to keep the woman. He wants to keep the byproduct. Oh, my God, dude. Because uh, it's a big number. Oh, I don't like the, uh, the title. It's a big number, by the way. Eli's fetuses. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. there's six of them. So it's like a Brady Bunch thing, you know, yeah. where you can have the whole family. And there's just a doctor holding a scissors. Yeah, and that's in the middle. Yeah. That's probably enough stem cells to keep him going for a while, though. Right? Long like, time. You guys don't know this about Eli, but he's 73 years old. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Captain America. Yeah. It's his own aborted fetuses that are keeping him alive. Yeah, well, that, that's it's th- half him. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> he's South- a- South Park did this. With yeah. Chris, really? With Christopher Reeve. Yeah, he was just cracking babies in half and sucking their brains out. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, that was like season three. And then he walked? I was in high school. Was yeah. it really? That was like I, season long three. Time ago. Yeah. I'm That's not a so big, like, animated guy. I, I watched the first season of a lot of shows. South shit. Park is one of the best on. shows Probably of all time. Have and you watched be- BoJack Horseman? Yes. Yeah, it's really uh, but, good too. but same thing. I'll watch, I'll watch a few <laughs> episodes and then I'll I get so, to this and I'm good. I was taking a flight from LA to Cleveland. And it's a long fucking flight, so I downloaded four episodes of BoJack. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching them with my noise-canceling headphones. The first three episodes are normal ones where I'm laughing very hard. I have a pretty loud laugh. The fourth one was the episode where he does his mom's eulogy, and it's very sad. So I'm bawling. Free churro. uh, Yeah, free churros. I'm crying. Big tears. The woman next to me, after I took my headphones off, goes, hey, you have someone with you? (laughs) I was like... What, what do you mean? She goes, oh, never mind. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. What did you mean? She's like, well, I thought maybe you had like a helper. <laughs> oh. She thought I was retarded. She was like, <laughs> I asked oh, her, she's like, boy. well, you're watching a cartoon and laughing, and then the same cartoon made you cry really hard. Yeah. I, she yeah. thought I had a helper on the plane. I understand it. You should. <laughs> I understand it. Did yeah, what was, what was your answer? <laughs> yeah, what was, what was your answer? It was Eli. You're, yeah. both, in, you're both in trouble. Is, once is this I, a carry-on? I feel like <laughs> once somebody has broach the question whether or not you're retarded, you can then start acting retarded and getting mm-hmm. away with a lot of stuff because <laughs> they'll be too nervous to offend you. Yeah. Right? So now you're free game, like grabbing fucking titties. That's uh, when I started insider trading. <laughs> it's like they'll never arrest a retard. You should never. Go, you should go to Congress. Yeah. Yeah, you can be. You they can do that right there in. quite a bit. Yeah, dude, refund politicians but from the outside. <laughs> dude, I'm in. Did you guys see the emotional support uh, peacock? peacock? Yeah. Yeah. They brought on the plane the other day and somebody asked, do you need that? She was like, yes, yes, I do. She goes, I work for NBC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you need a peacock just to be out in public, you shouldn't be out in public. Yeah, I feel like, yeah. like that's a pretty reasonable thing to say. I want to get out of her flight and be like, I want uh, my uh, emotional support shark. Yeah. <laughs> so I have an entire it's aquarium a with me. It's an yeah, aquarium yeah. on a fucking skateboard. You just yeah. pull it How far are we from emotional support Don't reach into the tank. <laughs> no, not far at all. Right? Not I need this all. to feel safe. Yeah. An, an emotional support gun? Pistol, yeah. yeah. I've got one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will never leave home It's without. usually on the table at some point. Yeah, there it is. There yes. it is. <laughs> Did you see the kid that uh, was going into some school in Dallas, and he jumps on his girlfriend's back, like, horsing around, and his gun falls out? No. It's in a security school? footage at a school, and this kid's I'll going into school, and his gun falls out, and then he tries to grab it, like, oh, my bad, and the security guys are like, fucking no. No, dude, no. I feel like don't probably take a gun to school. Yeah. Never. I don't know. I mean, I don't want to be a dick. I will it. say, if I'm a senior <laughs> and I'm going to school and there's that one kid, I might want one for self-defense. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. look, and then you go to the alt school, right? So you get, everybody's had the one friend who was expelled and then they go to that alt yeah. school. Yeah, and I was there. And every, they come back with a nose ring. Like one, every, one out of every four kids has a trench coat on. Yeah. Yeah, I came back from alt so, school gay. Too much. <laughs> did, really? did you go to alt school? I did, of course. Oh, Several no times. Way. You yeah. seem too normal for that. I know. <laughs> what happened? What sent you there? Gay? My freshman year of high school, I got arrested for pot. Okay. Uh, and so they sent me to alt school for 45 days. How much pot, though? Just a quarter ounce. Eh, that's not bad at all. They said yeah, you seven school? grams. Yeah, but I was fourteen, you know. So uh, they were okay. like, "Whoa!" Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I went. The thing about it was funny. Is it was like right before I finished freshman year, 
So I had five days in freshman year, but then 40 days in sophomore year. So I came back to school sophomore year after 40 days of alt school, and everyone was like, whoa, he's a tough and hardened criminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I'm like a flamboyant fucking Hello? You know, talent. I'd be like, sup, bitches? I've been in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Rico's with me. Hold my pocket. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering about Jesse. Like, Jesse Smollett goes well, I to made jail. The, I made a meme about it. Remember that episode from The Office where Kevin is telling the Oscar about jail? Yeah, I saw. <laughs> I made funny. that meme, and I put juicy. Yeah. It's fucking fake because it's so perfect. But so I read, I, I, and I hate to rain on your parade. And I, to be, I wouldn't even be talking shit to that dude if he wasn't such a fucking cunt all the time. No I know. shit. Like I, I don't know. care if you break the law, do whatever the fuck you want. But they're, so they're going to separate him. So he's going to get by himself the entire time, and then they, they which is worse. I, that's well, he's going to be trapped with the person that, that assaulted him. Ooh, Ooh that would be great. No, it's him. It's him. Yeah, it's him. It's him. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I, no, you know what? He's going to be there. He's going to be him in a mirror. I, I thought you meant the two black guys from uh, Nigeria. That would be way funnier because then they would just be banging the whole time. Well, <laughs> masturbate. They were masturbating together. I, it's a different story. D- explain this to me as a as a fucking gay man pretending to be straight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is an expert? Like if you're if you're if you're gay or you like gay shit. It can't just be that you want to masturbate in the presence of another man, right? No, of course not. Like, you not. want to bang him. No. So why, yeah, is, that, is that like a gateway drug, or is it like he's a pussy and he doesn't want to fully commit? And I mean the two Nigerians, because um, J- Justice Smollett was openly gay for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. it's not him. That I was, think it's a gateway where it's like, hey, we're going to jack off together, and then later on down the road, you'll let me put the head in. Yeah. Yeah. I no, I didn't so. think I'd be in the middle of this conversation today. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is my wife just sitting there watching like, oh, God, is it real? Is he gay? <laughs> I know. And, and the thing is, we know your wife. She's rad. And yeah. you're, you're definitely not gay. It's like yeah. that, that, that uh, meme of the white woman with all the math equations going yeah. around. <laughs> yeah. She's like thinking back to something you said a year ago because you've only known yeah. each other for like six months. Yeah, because um, the wild thing is you guys got married during COVID, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and it's still going. Everything's rad. Yeah. And crushing you, it, dude. And you guys are the happy, two of the happiest people I've ever met because you guys came to the live seltzer event. Yeah. Uh, Florida, seltzer. And then you have Eli, who's super miserable, but is getting a bunch of abortions and knocking people up. Yeah. And you're like, Look, which is better? It point? takes all kinds, right? Yeah. Like, it, not, not everybody is a gasket. Not everybody is a cog. Not everybody is a fucking panel switch. Sure. Yeah. Now gaskets can become cogs. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I don't agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> reduce, reduce the entire trans conversation down to fucking mechanical parts. Yeah. <laughs> no, hell no. You ain't going to become a calculator. Fuck you. Yeah. Uh, this is America. This is an automatic. It's not a manual we, now. We fought yeah. the Nazis to stop this shit from happening, man. And now we, we, we could have had Trans Frank, and it was ruined. Yeah, we will. I'm still, so we'll, upset about that. We'll probably, no. we'll probably still do you it. You probably we'll heard my it. fucking asthmatic laugh from over there. That's oh, the yeah, funniest yeah. premise of all time. We're probably going to do it, to we're, be we're, We'll do it, but it's, it's on the last show where we get canceled, and it's yeah. just like, hey, we'll make the movie. We'll get canceled across the board. It's your kamikaze. Yeah, and yeah. then we'll have every guest on we've ever had for you know, the last seven years or whatever just come and say the N-word. Uh, and then oh, that's man. it, and it's like then the YouTube pulls like the Like a plug. spelling bee, you just go up to the mic, and you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you got to clap while you're doing it. Yeah. Right. You got to get the. Oh right. my God. You could do it as so many people. Oh, guys, Tom Hanks is here to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Just do it wow. audio. A N word. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it audio only. You got an N word in me. What's his name? What's. Uh, uh, Randy Red, Newman. Uh, Randy Newman. Randy Newman. Newman. Yeah. Yeah. Just a singer. Yeah. Just oh. Sam Smith. <laughs> yeah. <N-word. laughs> <laughs> Jamie Foxx. Oh, I got an N word way <laughs> over town. Just Look good to me. Three of us here. Just doing the Werner Herzog. <laughs> Hello, N words. Yeah. <laughs> That, you know what that reminds me of is that show that you and Adam and uh, what's Piat. that? Piat. Piat. Yeah, yeah. We're doing another one, I think, this year. Oh, you that was one you. of my favorite did, podcasts ever. Dude. Bro, we did. It's so crazy. We did it here a year ago. Yeah. 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 That was yeah. so good. Thanks, Holy man. Shit. Yeah, it was really, it was, uh, it's something that, I, that Adam and I did with Jeff Richards, who was very famous mm. in Impression I did a movie with Jeff Richards. Yeah. He's great. He's great. Uh, terrible with money, but he's a great guy. <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Piat, terrible. Piat's one of the best impressionists I've ever heard. It's unbelievable. Life. I mean, they're like... To do it for comedic value is one thing, and being able to hit the certain parts of the person that's part of their caricature, yeah. that's, that's a good impressionist. But he's like, I would believe it. Like, if, you, if I was blind and he was talking to me, I would believe he's Morgan Freeman. He I've is. never heard anything, like or Joe Biden. Like, I've never heard anybody Jeff, yeah. that's that technically good at it. Jeff Richards is the best letterman I've ever heard. Yeah, I would agree with you. I think he does. You know, the thing is, I think 
impressionists, I think, even ones with a huge catalog, there's like a few that they do like really, really, mm -hmm. really, really well. And mm -hmm. for Jeff Richards, who does a million, that one is just like, whoa. Because it's, it's so hard to do. Uh, Jonathan Kite. No, I would, <laughs> I would say probably maybe Vince Vaughn or, yeah. uh, or Seth Rogen or... Uh, because you do, you, you start with one and then you build out, you know? Mm, yeah. So the one that you've been doing longest is probably the one you've been doing the best because, like... Because you can do the middle parts of the conversation, too, at that point, Vince right? Vaughn. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now, yeah. now, you're, now you're thinking in his voice. Well, that's... I always say... It's different, right? It's, that's the only way I do it. Like, the micro-impressions are stupid. I just do them because they make me laugh. Yeah, yeah. But when I try to learn an impression, especially if it's for a job, you have to learn the ups and downs. Yeah. You yeah. can't just learn the, the highlights. Or one them. word, yeah. Or one sentence yeah. or a phrase. Uh, by the way, for the audio listeners, and I hate to do this to you, pop off of Vince Vaughn's, because last time you were on, they were like, why didn't you make him do it? And I was like, oh. just give him one line. I, uh, I just want to say something right now, baby boy. The fucking energy that you're bringing in the room and he's going to get another goddamn tattoo. The guy's getting on there. He's about to have an abortion. I can't really you know, understand what's happening. And I'm just saying I'm a part of it. I'm all of it. All the, <laughs> everything. Ha, 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 ha. Daddy's a part of it. <laughs> Daddy's going to be a part of your journey. And I'm, I'm a part of the journey because I'm on the journey with you, like psychologically. You ever see the movie E.T.? Where the guy fucking gets on the bike and the alien flies off, finger lights up. Not a part of the analogy, but I think it's a great film we should watch together as like a group right now. <laughs> Thank you. And that's for the audio show. That's for the audio show. We'll give, it, we'll, we'll give that wild, applause. Man. We'll give that applause. There it is. Are you getting another tattoo? <laughs> yeah. Dude, I was like, yo, I was like, yo is, dude. Yo, this dude is hardcore. He's doing your Trump shit. idea. Listen, yo. get, get the Trump. Get it so bad, okay? <laughs> Believe me. Okay? The problem is, now that he's not president, he's very conversational, okay? And I've said that. Believe me, okay? <laughs> he did a uh, Nelf Boys podcast the other day. I got pulled. Got pulled no. from YouTube, yeah. Yeah, I got 5, ma five million, million views, views oh, in 24 sure. in hours. In 23 hours, and then they yeah. ripped it off of YouTube, and their explanation was misinformation. What? Yeah, but they were right. Oh, they were right? What do you mean they were right? Yeah, what Trump said was outrageous. What, what did he what say? What did he say? Uh, he said that he was um, a music aficionado. <laughs> <laughs> he said he had a high aptitude for music. So it was the MPAA that the came best? after him. Yeah. Oh, no, the RIA, excuse me. The RIA came after him. I'm actually, he, I'm actually just kidding. What he said sounded wrong until he finished it, because what he said was, I have a high aptitude for music. Whenever I need to get a party going, I play YMCA. Uh, These are well, all real quotes. From did Trump. he really say that? No yes. He did. He did. That's he did. a pretty gay thing That's for a seventy-three-year-old so cool. dude. To he say. also well, no. said, "Do you remember we were at the was it the Logan Paul fight?" And he mm. came out to YMCA, and I was like, "What the fuck is going they on?" They do here? it like him and that dude that always takes shoeies. They do that shit to be funny. Yes. Like he came out to Aqua. Two fight, two or three fights. I love ago. Aqua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Aqua fan. Yeah, well, that's that's the problem. That's what uh, Trump said that was wrong. He goes, Salt and Pepper, only one good album. <laughs> and they're like, that's a lie. Get him out of here. <laughs> Believe me, only one good one. You think Salt and Pepper had more than one good album? Listen, I, you know, believe me, they had only one good one. And it was not great, okay? Trust me. Not great, okay? A lot of people are saying it. I'm saying it. But so many people are so saying it. Badly oh, when he so uses good. for nefarious purposes. Yeah. Just like, yeah. So, so good. good. You just know to start I have a laundry just, list of things just you should to start say as people. calling sitting Republican Congress people and using yeah. that voice and like getting them to agree to shit that's fucked up. Can we all agree on this call? The salt and pepper. <laughs> <laughs> salt and pepper. <laughs> Only had one. One good album. One good. Not even great. <laughs> one good? Maybe. <laughs> you have to learn like different for impressionists. Like Octaves. Yeah, because he was, up, down, when, he up, was down, on, yeah. when he was on The Apprentice, the mic was right here. He just said, wow, this hard seltzer. Wow. Very good. And then when he became president, he wasn't used to talking in, a, in front of crowds. He yeah. just wasn't. So he had to get up there and yell and say, Ross, you're a great guy with a fat cock. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. I love Tyson's chicken, and I love Ross's cocks. And I would say that about all the. But now that he doesn't, he's sort of slowing down, and he's trying to get you to understand what he's talking about. Yeah, he doesn't yell anymore. No, <laughs> he doesn't no. yell at all. So what you is your learn. voicemail? Do you have a cool voice? Is your voicemail? No, I don't have anybody. I go. You I, know, Jared's voicemail is still Vincent Marcus doing uh, Family uh, Guy. Peter Griffin. Yeah. It's wow. been that for like fucking 10 years. Ten years. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, incredible. Yeah. Why would you ever change it? I, he's actually added to it. Yeah, that's so <laughs> I cool. I think he added a Cleveland Five to minutes it, long. Wow. Yeah, it's five minutes long. Uh, that's that's really funny. Him. That's why. That terrible you should hours. do that. Go on Cameo. You can quit this whole so, acting thing. Can I tell you something? No joke. I am on Cameo, and I go, I'll do whatever. They only ask me for Oleg. 
I go, no I, list, I go, I list, I could do a thousand impressions. It must be international people. Yeah. yeah. And they're just like, please say fuck Putin. Yeah. <laughs> Are we saying the fuck Putin? <laughs> Sound bite. Um, <laughs> it's just, but it's like, it's so ridiculous. And then I, and then one, one woman was like, oh, can you say happy birthday to my boyfriend is Vince Vaughn? I was like, yeah, sure. But they <laughs> never, no one asked nothing. Not Obama. And I have, I mean, I have. I could do, I think, like 150. I didn't know you did an Obama. You did Obama? Oh, he's a great Obama. We're talking about that's what his uh, bones. Hello, uh, Ross. Uh, <laughs> let me be clear. I'm having a wonderful time uh, on your podcast. Uh, I like you. I like your muscles. I'm drinking hard AF, and I am a hard AF. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking wild, it's dude. It's amazing. It's amazing. And look, uh, we've done Republicans and Democrats. We don't care on this show. We've done over a thousand episodes. No, all politicians are cunts. Uh, are cunts. Either I said that on stage. I go, can we all agree that all politicians are full of shit? Yeah, all That's, of them. I actually have a brand. It's all po- APAC. All APAC. politicians are cunts. I it's, love it. We've got stickers. I hate them all. Everything. Yeah. Fuck them all. Yeah. Amen. Uh, we've got t shirts. Defund politicians. Go to drinkabros.com slash store. Uh, thank you for being with us for over a thousand episodes. At the end of every show, we do the drinking bro of the week. Uh, this one is multiple. Uh, obviously, uh, everybody who's been on the show, Matt Best. Uh, Evan Hafer, Jared Taylor, Dan Holloway, Rocco, Rocco uh, myself, and then uh, everybody else who's filled in over the years. Jesse's filled in mm. uh, over the years. She did. A, my wife did one of the shows uh, during labor. Wow. Uh, we had a half she hour left. She went into labor on the show, yeah. She went into labor on the show. We had a half hour left, and uh, Evan was like, hey, can you stay and finish it? Because, you know, wow. in, the, in the early days, you needed an hour for advertisers. Yeah. And so she stayed, and then we took her to the hospital afterwards. So wow. uh, shout out to The <laughs> baby is alive. Baby's still alive. Fine. Yeah, baby's still alive. It's not an Eli baby. The, no, thank no, God. We, it's, it's the baby came out doing an ad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for ghost For bed. diapers. How's your guy ghost bed? <laughs> <laughs> so, first word was 10% off? That's incredible. Exactly. <laughs> well, the first word was promo code? <laughs> yeah, yeah, promo code. Drink it, bros. 40% off that bundle package. Um, yeah. But thank you to everybody who's been on over the years. We're not stopping anytime soon. I don't know that we'll do another one of these until... 10,000, I guess, because it's, I know, this yeah. isn't going anywhere. The show's not going anywhere. We greatly appreciate all your support over the years. Uh, and if you want to support us, go to hardafseltzer.com. Order it right to your house. Get fucked up. Last row Lopez, thank you for doing this. Uh, the tattoo. Will XX, thank you for Hell being yeah, here. Brother. Look at that. We'll close the show out on that. Let's zoom in on that. Look at that thing. My God, dude. Yeah, can we... Uh... Happy birthday to this future president <laughs> for D'Anthony D'Anthony Holloway I'm Ross Patterson this is the Drinking Bros podcast good night everyone